Right, good evening. Let's let's start then. Thank you very much. Um, what's the fifth of October? Just in case anyone's recording, recording access for details. Yeah, yeah all done. Uh, and uh, you just cut the notes here. Obviously, it's blue bin night tonight, in case you've forgotten. And although uh, Zoom is not the ideal, um, on a night, night like tonight, it's uh, a lot nicer than walking to the village hall. So there are the odd, the odd concessions. <laughs> um, so we start off with the agenda uh, to receive any apologies for absence. Obviously, none. Declarations of interest. Look around. No. Okay. No, no, no. Thank you very much. Um, uh, roll down. He hopes. With me. Okay, so this is the point where I can close the meeting if the member of the public, or no, the member of the public wishes to say anything. Um, three minutes on uh, agenda items. So, Andy, fire away. Oh, just, a couple, just a couple, Graham. Um, 2021 84, all about the Christmas tree lights. Oh, yes. Um, you may know already because I think you're a member of the Village Hall sort of committee group, uh, and so is Nicola, that Village Hall are looking and uh, thinking of putting up a Christmas tree with lights. Uh, it's under consideration at the moment. Just a, a request that uh, if you do agree that you're going to put up lights somewhere, perhaps to synchronise with them to make sure that they're all in keeping and maybe the same colour or something, I don't know what, but just uh, keep that into consideration when you're going into the implementation okay. planning. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thank and, you. and the second one is 2021-86 about the parish plan. Uh, again, sorry, this that was from Liz. Um, that request she she uh, she couldn't make the meeting. Um, parish plan, uh, depending upon what's decided about setting up a working group, there uh, the request from Liz was, could you uh, consult the steering group that obviously put the whole thing together? Um, because obviously uh, they probably have the best insight of why they came up with uh, some of those times. Um, so uh, I know Ian was on the steering group, so that's uh, an easy start. But there are a whole lot of other folks. Uh, that were as well as still live in the village. So please, please, if you decide to go ahead with a working group, could you please consult with all of those on the original parish plan steering committee? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you much. Okay, that's good. So I'll, I'll close that part of the meeting and we'll go straight into the um, parish councillor parts. So the first item is uh, 2174 to approve the minutes of the parish council meeting held on the 7th of September. Uh, you've hopefully all seen draft copies. I'll be all happy with that. Yep. 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 Okay. Can I have a second to propose that I sign them? Yep. Rob is seconding. All in favour? Wave your hands. Yeah. Fine. Brilliant. Thank you much. That's good. Um, and then the second minute of the meeting is a planning meeting that we had on the 22nd of September. This was to um, review the changes to the planning system. Um, when the planning committee met. So it's really only myself and Kieran and Peter, Peter's forehead there, who can who can uh, comment on that. Are you too <laughs> happy with the, the minutes? Yeah. Yeah, okay, can one of you second it? Yeah, Kieran second, are you in favour, Peter? Fine, okay, so that's those minutes sorted. Thank you much. Um, so 2175, matters rising from the last meeting, clerk's report, um, over to Nicola. Thank you much. Sorry, still scribbling. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so this is where Nicola gives us a, a brief rundown of all the things that have happened um, during the month and other things that may, will be of interest, hopefully. So, not so brief this month, I'm afraid. Um, I have had correspondence from the A14 Legacy Fund. So this is the fund where Hilton Parish Council was successful in their bid uh, for works to the pond. So both Reeves Ditch and a footpath around the pond in Gravy Way. So this had all gone very quiet. Unfortunately, the chap that was leading it moved on to another project. So I've had confirmation that uh, it is still going to happen. They are still working on it. And I'm awaiting the uh, program as to what will happen next and hopefully when. Uh, so I'll let you know once I receive that. Um, we have had a response on the... Um, ETRO application to, from the Department for Transport to say that a weight limit TRO would not qualify for an ETRO under the EATF, which is the Emergency Active Travel Fund. Um, I have included a summary of the parishioners' emails for you in Dropbox. Today we will be going over how to join a Zoom oh, meeting. Help. Stop. We've got a couple options. Sorry. 
<laughs> Never mind. Um, just to let you know, the Finance Committee will be meeting on Wednesday to discuss the draft budget and the preset recommendations. So if you would like to add something or uh, mention something for the Finance Committee to discuss, then please let me know. We've had an update received from the County Council regarding the non-motorised users route to state that the proposal for the NMU link between Hilton and Finstanton is still being discussed with High Road England. The scheme is with a, a, a programme of proposals for government funding. The feasibility study has been considered by High Road England and the County Council is working with them to progress the programme of proposals. So again, still ticking over. Yep. Um, bonfire night and fireworks. I've put posters up on the notice board to say that there'll be no bonfire night. It's gone on the website. Facebook and have been included in Spectrum and the Firework Committee have been informed and have responded to say that they are aware. Uh, the new website went live uh, on the day of the deadline on the 23rd of September, so we met the deadline. Uh, there were a few teething issues originally, a few odd categories and strange posts, but uh, hopefully those are all resolved now um, and it seems to be working well. The feedback from the parishioners has been positive. The playground bin has been uh, purchased and installed. The uh, community gritting scheme posters went up on the notice board. And again, they also went on Facebook website and Spectrum. Uh, the coronavirus fund, which you agreed last month to apply for the 3000 pound grant from has been paused. So no application has been made to that fund. Um, the licensing consultation response was submitted, as was the response to the dog control public spaces protection order, and the changes to the planning system uh, response was sent as agreed in the planning meeting. I'm still getting uh, reports of streetlights, two more streetlights have been reported, I've had another one reported today, so um, do let me know if there are any others that are not working. Um, I was informed that there have been waterworks on the high street to run uh, water pipes or utilities through uh, parish council land to the house next to Peck's Coppice. Um, so I have queried this with Cambridge Water, who have stated that they should have served a notice on us. They didn't realise it was parish council land. They thought it was just highways. Um, so they are uh, engaging their land agent Bidwells to uh, look at what compensation is due. And the LHI application for 21-22 was submitted um, and I have uh, confirmed receipt from local projects. And I've also included a copy of that in your supporting documents for information. That is me done. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, as you say, quite a lot this, this month. Um, so <laughs> actually you're back on stage now, aren't you? Um, so we then move on to 76 which is uh, to receive and discuss financial reports. Now, these are always presented to us, but because of previous meetings running a bit long, we've just re received them. Uh, so it's about time we actually reviewed them. So um, Nicola, if you could just sort of give us a summary or an overview of those four bits and pieces, that'd be good. Uh, Graham? Yeah? Can I just ask Nicola one question about her report? Yeah, you have to, we couldn't wait. <laughs> um, regarding the coronavirus, um, bit. You say it's been paused. Will we be submitting once it's opened? I don't know whether it's going to be reopened. At the moment, all it says on their website is paused. But if it is? Well, then, yeah, that was the resolution of the council. So, yeah, I'll keep an eye on it. But thank you. Um, as I say, at the moment, I just don't know whether it will be reopened. Far away, yeah. Okay, uh, so management accounts. So you've seen these before. This gives you a comparison by budget category um, of your spend over the last, uh, the current year and the previous three years. Um, so you can see there the preset obviously increasing. Obviously this year there is no uh, fireworks monies due in and there will be very little VAT money due in because most of it was claimed last year due to the massive spend on the playground. Um, so I'm only expecting a hundred pounds or so in VAT. So we're pretty much uh, received all our income this year, I would expect. As I stated before, the interest rate on the account has been reduced to zero, so I don't expect to uh, receive any more interest payments. 
Um, then we look down the expenditure lines and you can see exactly what's been spent so far. We see we are only halfway through the financial year. So um, this is not a picture of where we will be at year end. Um, big changes this year are insurance. Obviously there's a massive reduction in the insurance costs. Um, we haven't spent anywhere near as much on stationery though. Um, I will need to spend a little more on things like printer toner and so on and so forth. Um, and the trading budget will be maxed out this year with my Silka training going through. Uh, venue costs, I would expect to be reduced, but not markedly. The way we pay for our venue costs is annually. So for both the Village Hall and the Methodist Church, we're still paying for last year when we were actually meeting in person. Um, anyone got any questions on the spends on the management accounts? Nope. Okay, so your budget analysis, these are the same numbers pulled through from the management accounts and compared against uh, what you budgeted at the beginning of the financial year. Um, so I've given you the current spend, which is the, the number pulled through from the management accounts and a projected spend. Now this is based on my estimation. So they are definitely not um, fixed amounts, but uh, it is where I expect us to be there or thereabouts by year end. So you can see, obviously, we are down on, um, slightly down on interest, but otherwise income is uh, pretty much what we expected with the exception of the fireworks, but then equally we're not spending any money on fireworks. So that nets out quite nicely. Um, there are a couple of overspends. The playground is an overspend and the website is the biggest overspend on there. But uh, as we've discussed before, it wasn't uh, an optional overspend. Uh, any questions on the budget analysis? Nope. Not for me. Can I just double check that I think that the difference between our income, the current spend 3657 and the anticipated spend 28484 means that we've got 2,200-ish that isn't allocated at the moment. If there is an underspend at the end of the year, it'll get put into the general reserves. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Peter, yeah, hi. We're, we're, we're not just yeah. committed 9,000 pounds to the LHI bid, and that's got to come from somewhere, hasn't it? So any underspend this year will go to that LHI bid that we all agreed last month, would that be right? So there isn't cash slopping around. And we're also presumably it. the year end is is April. Thirty first March. March. March yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it's still still a fair. Well, in fact, the fact that we've moved on a bit, the fact we've had our second uh, preset payment shows that we're only halfway through the year, aren't we? So mm. um, there could be some interesting ones, more storms and things. So yeah. So we're we're probably about right as an RFO. Would you comment or? Yeah. I mean, we don't want to be looking at. A budgeted overspend so uh, where we are is a, a nice place to be I think okay. uh, there's a lot of councils that are in much worse positions than us yeah, yeah sure uh, sorry Peter was there first you saying it quick, yeah, sorry it? can I just check Nicola so the council last year overspent by four thousand eight hundred pounds is that correct as well from the management um, accounts yes yeah okay so we've got that deficit to make up as well yes yeah okay thanks uh, Laura, you. So I was just wondering, just that as we're talking about these things, is it possible, like not necessarily now, but in future, to share your screen, Nicholas? So we're all looking at and talking about the same thing. Just because by the time I open the document yeah. we're looking at, I can't then catch up with where we're talking about. So if we were all looking yeah. at the same document, it might be useful. Yeah. Is how does that it's how fine. does that um, uh, allow us in terms of people commenting and you can't see who's making the comment is that okay as far as the rules go Nicola? Uh, you can still see um, people's oh, images down the side of the screen. Okay okay so we, we, that, that'd be possible. Okay that's good. Uh, I'm, just a, bit, so I'm you? just a bit confused about Peter's comment because we committed 9,000 as you say last year to the last week last month even um, to the project in the various reserves that we've got earmarked already, the restricted funds and the reserves, are there any of that that actually meets the 9,000 bit, contributes in? Nothing. 
Thank you. Okay, well, I mean, we are half through the year. General summary from RFO is that uh, things are okay. Um, and it's just to point out what we said before that we are meeting as a, a finance committee are, are meeting this week. In fact. So if anyone wants to have anything put in the budget or considered, then do drop Nicola a line and we can discuss it. And I would just point out that this will only be a, a recommendation for next year's budget. It will be brought back to council. So, you know, nothing's going to happen without uh, us all knowing. So don't, uh, don't, don't, don't panic, don't fear. Okay, uh, so that's done financial reports, I think. Yeah. Unless you want me to go through that, I did the financial accounts as well. Do you want me to go through those? Yeah. Or are you happy no, yeah, with those? Let's give, let's give them a good idea. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, so your financial accounts show the movement within the accounts this month. So your opening balance is as at the 1st of September and your closing balance is as at the 30th. Um, it shows you the movement within the month. So the payments received, the payments you agreed at the last meeting, um, and the ones that are on this meeting's agenda. Um, so obviously the direct debits and card payments have to go out on the future meeting agenda. Um, it gives you the breakdown there of where the monies are sitting. So currently we have quite a lot in the current account as the precepts just been received. So normally I would transfer some of that into the savings. At the moment, there's not a huge point in that in the fact that there's no interest paid on the savings. Um, your restricted funds, so these are monies that you are uh, prohibited from spending on anything other than their intended purpose, uh, are broken down there. Um, and then the box underneath shows you what's in your earmarked reserves. So this is money that you as a council have chosen to budget separately and uh, put in a pot for later, if you like. Um, so things like the LHI bid, where you put £200 aside, um, and any uh, of the, the repair maintenance funds that you add into at the bottom of the budget, this is where they sit. So this is an idea of how much money is sat there. Should you have to replace a bridge uh, or do works to a streetlight, this is the money that you have in the budget. Uh, they're ready and waiting. Any questions on the financial accounts? Oh, Peter, yeah, far away. I'm really sorry, but I thought we would we were uh, having a reserve built up for um, repairs to such things as the parish council car park adjacent to the village hall. So you, you like as an earmark reserve, I mean? Yeah, I thought we would put uh, way back, I guess, um, we were putting 250 pounds away for that each year, was weren't we? Or is that being put into something like bridge, bench or paths? It wasn't something I had a record of when I became oh, okay. RFI. Well, I mean, um, that's something we can we can consider yeah, at the uh, finance meeting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, we know how much the, the car park was to sort of yeah. tidy up last time. Mm. That must be four or five years ago, probably five years ago. Um, so, yeah, we can, consider, can share that out. Um, Rob, were your, was your hand up? Yeah. No, okay. Just wait a minute. Okay. Head, sorry. <laughs> so fair enough. It's good. Um, okay, so that's that. If, any more questions? Oh, Anne, yeah, I couldn't see you. Yes, sorry, right. Anne, hi. No, uh, just a quick question about the reserves of the Finance Committee meeting shortly. Is it an idea to just, uh, uh, and you may be doing anyway, go back through all the reserves and say, do we still need it? Uh, are there other things that we should have uh, reserves for, um, mm -hmm. like the 9,000 we've suggested we might? Throw into the pot for the LHI bid. Got to come from somewhere. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that we'll need considering. I mean, mm. I don't know. Putting you on the spot, Nick. We, we've had no indication of when the LHI will be discussed, have they? Or, or agreed? Uh, it's normally the March meeting of the committee. Yeah, but this is from last March, isn't it? We're sort of a bit, we're late. Everything's a bit late. Yeah, so whether they'll move the committee dates back, I don't know at this point. Okay. Okay. So that's, we won't we won't know at nine thousand. Okay, right, so let's, oh. Heather. Sorry, one other question. Was the 9,000 going to be spread over a number of years though, do I remember? Uh, I think we'd like it to, but there's no guarantee. It, uh, the, okay. the, form, the form didn't say that, it just said how much have you got. Previously, we've, we've managed to stretch it, but um, we haven't had any, any comment on that, I think it's fair to say. Um, and there's, the final one is the, uh, a summary of the playground. Yes. Who wants to see that one? Yeah, as you've done it. <clears throat> yeah, so this gives you the breakout, 
breakdown of the spend on the playground. So the top section is what you originally agreed to spend on the playground, uh, matched off against your donations received. So if you just spent what you originally agreed to spend, then it would have cost the council in the range of £1,600. Uh, obviously, you have subsequently agreed extra expenditure like the gate and the stump grinding and so on and so forth. Uh, so with that added on and with the balance of sill money that we had left in the pot after the paths, um, that leaves you with a net expenditure on the playground of £3,095.40. So that's actually what the playground has cost the council. Okay. Any questions? Okay, no, that's, I've got the screen up. Okay, that's fine then, we'll move on. Um, now, this is the next would item. Like, sorry, Graham, would you like to uh, receive the accounts? Oh, I'd love to, yes, I would love to receive them. And can I have um, a seconder to also receive them with me? Does anyone want to, yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ian, you, I think you were first. Are we all in favor of receiving the accounts as we've seen them? Yeah. Okay. All right. I can't, <laughs> I've got a screen at the moment. I can't, I can't see everybody. Actually, I can move that one down, I suppose, couldn't I? Oh, goodness. No, I won't move it down. Oh, no. Right. Can't see any of you now, so uh, wish me luck. Could be an advantage. Uh, <laughs> just a quick, just a quick one. Can I just say thank you for going through the accounts this month because we haven't for a few months. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so, so they're, they're always there, but it's just nice to actually go through them. Now, this is the um, the next item is the review of the. Uh, I better just read it out exactly as it is. Um, da -da 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 -da. To receive the results of the survey regarding the trim trail and decide upon next steps. Now, you've had a, a summary of everything and whatever. Um, I think it's fair to say we've had a, a good response, and I would like, uh, well, suggest that maybe we ask Nicola to respond to all those who emailed or whatever and with, with thanks and maybe a general thanks on the Facebook or whatever, a website, just to, just to let parishioners know that we have received their comments. Um, would you like to vote on that? Uh, yeah, is that, is that a, an acceptable idea? Uh, Rob's yeah. seconding it? All no, in, all I, I had a question actually, Graham. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> would we share the results with them, the, at least the summary survey? Maybe not all the comments, yes. but the summary I'll just, survey. I'll just move on to that. Yeah, okay. yeah. The, the, um, no, I'll second it. Okay, then. So, all in favour of that, are we going to thank our person? No, so, with, this is just thanking. Thanking, yeah. I mean, obviously, some would have emailed you and some by what survey monkey and whatever, but. So you can't thank every personally, but I mean, if you could just thank those that you know about and- uh, I can I can do the ones that are via email or have given me an email address. Yes, and then the other ones, but there'll be a blanket response by a website, et cetera. Um, so would, we, would we publish that on our website as well as a general thanks? Yes. Yeah. Right, so the I think if you're all in agreement, I'm gonna propose that the um, Sorry, Graham, I didn't catch the vote of thanks. So you proposed it. Who seconded I it? I proposed it. Rob, Rob seconded it. <laughs> and then everyone's in favour. But do you want a second count? Do you want us all to put hands up again? Yeah, please. Are we all in favour? Fabulous. Okay, thanks so much. Rambling away here. Okay. Um, so again, we'll better take a vote. But I think the proposal is that we would uh, put the results up on the website just so that parishioners can see. Um, the, the general feeling that was um, as a result of the survey. So I imagine I need to take a vote on that, won't I, Nicola? Yes, please. Okay, so the proposal hang on, is... Hang on, quick question. Your proposal, that's just the data, that's not specific remarks. No, I'm proposing... Uh, you've got the PowerPoint, which I'm yeah. going to have to read through in a minute. Yeah. So you've got the... Uh, is it one, two... So it's just the results of the questions. Yeah. It won't be the comments about how it was received. Mm -hmm. It'll just be responses to the five questions. Yeah. So, that, so that's, that's all that we're going to publish. But I will, um, but again, I was going to go through it now um, for those who haven't seen it, because we have a couple of members of the public with us, which they need to uh, be, be informed of, I feel. So that's the proposal is that we put a survey up on the website. Can I have a second there for that, please? Who's in a second? Uh, Peter, thank you much. Uh, all in favour? Okay. That, is that a Unanimous, so I've got a big, big sheet on it. Okay, so in response to the first question, would you support a trim trail in the village? Um, of the 143 recipients, um, 68 said yes, 
75 said no. Uh, um, and then the next question, how often would you use it? Um, number of recipients or respondents is 144. Um, so it's eight said they use it daily, 28 said weekly, monthly 10, not at all, 98. Uh, that's that's numbers rather than percentage. So 6% said daily, 19% said weekly, 7% said monthly, and 68% said not at all. Now, I appreciate you've got all these figures, but for those people that haven't, I think it's important that I just run through it. Um, would you support the cost of trail coming from the PC precept if alternative funding can't be found? 142 responses. Yes was 48 people, no was 94. So 34 um, said yes, that they would be happy to come from the precept. 66 said no. Uh, and is this the final question? Would you support the equipment to be placed in the wilderness? No, oh, I've 144 responses this time. Um, yes was 55 people, no was 89. So uh, that's 38% said yes, 62% said no. So that's what I intend to, uh, that's what I want to go on the notice board on the website. Um, so with that in mind, does anybody wish, I'm going to shut this screen down. I can see you again. Now. Does anyone, Anne, your hands up. Um, yeah, having read all the comments that were presented, um, I know it wasn't intended this way, but the, the question about supporting it in the wilderness, I feel has completely obscured responses uh, new to other options, because a lot of the commentary was just about protecting the wilderness and keeping it safe. Um, so in hindsight, if you like, I feel that having raised it uh, as in this first instance, as would we have it in the wilderness, hasn't actually helped us get a clear picture of whether people would like a trim trail in and around the village or not. Okay, you just wish to respond to that for a day. Peter? You're on mute, mate. <laughs> Peter, you're muted. I hope it's going to be good. <laughs> yes, you're waiting. Sorry, I don't know why we're discussing it any further, really. The majority of people said no. The majority of people said they wouldn't want the parish council to fund it. The majority of people said they wouldn't use it. Um, so I don't know why we're, do we need to carry on discussing it? Well, my point is that the wilderness uh, has colored or seems to have colored many people's views as to whether it was a good idea or not. Uh, don't I don't agree. Because I think don't agree with you on that. Quite clear. Um, and it's in, in order I and mean, the wilderness was right at the end. Um, so I mean, I think it's, I think it's quite clear, but yeah, Heather? 98. 68% of people said they wouldn't use it at all. Heather, far away. Um, it feels a bit like a Brexit result, doesn't it? 58, 42% yeah, or whatever exactly. it was. Um, it was very close. Um, it is a no vote. So I agree with Peter, you know, we can't really proceed. Um, if you read the comments, there are some very positive comments about placing it in other areas around, um, near the playground as an extension to the playground. Um, it would be lovely if we could consider putting a piece of equipment there um, just to see how it goes. Um, but I take the no vote as a no vote. Yeah, okay. well said. Um, yeah. Does anybody wish to add anything? You're all, you're all sitting there quite quietly. I mean, um, yeah. Okay, Kieran? Yeah, I um, hadn't really anticipated this, but there's quite a lot of uh, stressed people in the village. <laughs> I think we probably all came across some um, and it's obviously quite a sensitive uh, anything to do with the, with the green and, um, and the world is, is sensitive yes. they did create quite a big reaction um, so I think before we do this anything like this again I think we really need to think it through uh, whether we because I think a lot of people got quite upset um, yeah. because it came from the parish council by default, it looks like the parish council has already sanctioned it, and uh, even though we are asking for opinion, um, so I yes, I agree. Thank you. We ought to be quite cautious about doing something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think maybe some uh, some more discussion should have taken place before we went straight to the lease. But uh, 
Beauty of hindsight, we're, we're, we're wiser. Sharon? Um, yeah, I, I agree with Heather that actually it might be a really um, good idea to revisit this and maybe um, just put one or two pieces of equipment either side of the, um, you know, to, to um, survey the, the village again, maybe in, say, six months in spring, um, just to see whether one or two pieces of adult um, sort of trim trail equipment would be appropriate near to the um, children's uh, play area because then you know if, if people if parents are there with their children who are old enough to be in the park on their own and they they could stand and you know just work out alongside their kids sort of thing so um you know outside of the the fence that might be quite a good idea because we we did talk yeah. about doing some sort of um you know nature trail or something there but there's quite a lot of spare land and and it wouldn't create any noise for the neighbors would it um, no. that's a, that's a, but I think that's an example that that would need to be discussed properly at a parish council. That would be on an, on a, an agenda item um, for, so for another day. So we need a proposal for it. Well, we need an agenda item. It, yeah. won't, be, it won't be tonight. <laughs> Hello. The other thing I'd add is that in future surveys, we ought to decide whether we're having one response per household or one response per adult or mm -hmm. however it's going to do. Um, and I think we should just um, be a bit clearer about how we put it out. I know I wrote it, but I well, wish afterwards I'd put wooden trim trail because people have visions of brightly coloured metal and things like that. So um, just things to learn. Indeed, things to learn. Slow, slowly, slowly approach and, and, and detailed. OK, well, I'm, I'm getting a, a feeling that it's going to, well, um, I'm going to propose that we take this proposal no further. Um, can I have a seconder for that, please? Peter, that's uh, seconded. All in favour? Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then um, against that proposal? Yep. Okay, and abstentions? Eight. Laura, which way are you voting? Sorry, I just, when you said no further, there was some discussion about a future agenda item and I agree that the no vote means that we don't do this current survey, but I'm not saying that. You, you, you're going to have to keep your keep your sentences quite short because your emails, your your sound's not very good. Yeah, I tried to connect my phone, it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the, 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 obviously, it, things we can bring a, a separate agenda at some other point. Suggestion more spring of next year, whatever. But I, I'm keen to sort of wrap up tonight's agenda item. Um, and the proposals we take it no further. I got a five, a five three, and then um, I wasn't too sure what you were doing. Are you are you in favour of taking it no further? Sporting. Okay, so it's six, six in favour and and three abstentions. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, right to discuss the survey trim trail discuss and decide upon the response to consultation regarding the ministry of housing community local government white paper right this is a bit of a sit down um i believe that there's you've in your supporting documents you've got the white paper proposals and you've got a proposed draft that um, kieran's come up with um so i think it's probably best if i hand this over to kieran to sort of talk through the um the proposed Response. I say it is a draft, so we do have an opportunity to make comments. So, Kieran, far away. Okay. Um, there's an awful lot of it. Just the uh, the white paper is 65 pages. Um, so I hope you've all read it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I, if I just give you a sort of a, a brief summary. Um, so, obviously, you're aware that this is to try and. Um, streamline the planning process at a local level in order to um, make it easier to build more houses more quickly. Um, the government target is uh, 300,000 a year nationally um, with a, an aim to build a million houses before the end of this parliament. Um, last year, we, there was 247,000 houses built in the country. So we're still a way off this target. So. Um, the plan is just to streamline, streamline the planning policy to get these uh, um, sites and um, schemes pushed through quick, more quickly. Um, and the way they're going to try and do that is um, by centralising a fair bit of the planning process. So, in other words, 
um, take some of the subjectivity out of it at a local level. Um, so design codes for buildings, um, which co um, designs which are acceptable and ones which are not, and therefore uh, the local authorities don't have to think too much about it. That's a good example. Um, moving the development management side of the local plans to make those more uh, agreed on a national level um, and uh, moving that to the national planning framework as opposed to local authorities. Um, these are just examples of how they intend to speed things up. Um, putting everything into a standardized digital format, maps, documents, um, is, is another way that they feel that uh, they can speed the process up. Um, the other part is to class land in three, in three categories. Land that's designated for growth, which will have automatic planning in principle given to it. So it's not a question that you still have to do have planning for what you're going to build, but you don't need to have planning for, you know, you won't, you will always be able to get the planning. So there's no if, it's all, um, it will all happen. Um, the other class of land is renewal, and then there's protected. Renewal is um, um, sites, uh, edges of town, settlements, that kind of thing, infill within villages. Um, protected land is national parks and areas of outstanding national beauty and uh, areas which uh, are deemed to be uh, green belt and conservation areas. Um, so that seems pretty sensible. It's not that far away from the way the local plan is already set up in Huntington. Sure. So it's not a million miles away, but um, they're obviously trying to standardize, centralize, and um, take out some of the uh, subjectivity in the planning process. So that's a sort of a rough, rough summary. Uh, I don't think it's really a good time for me to go through it line by line, but <laughs> that's, that's more or less how, how I've read it. Um, so I've gone through the form answering the questions as best I can. Uh, Nicola's also seen this. Um, so I've got basic principles in mind when I was answering questions. First one is uh, that we as a parish council encourage more building and meeting local housing needs. I think that's something which we would be in favour of, hopefully. Um, we would also be in, um, we would like to see adherence to our local plan, which we have got behind and is, I think reflects what we would all like to see in our area. Um, we would like to see the um, streamlining of the planning process, which is a bit heavy at the moment. Um, and the, the final thing is to encourage uh, sustainable building and sustainable energy and that kind of thing. So they are the four things that, I, as I was going through it, I was trying to sort of see, well, th those things I'm sure would be pretty um, uh, easily agreed upon by us all. And therefore I, I sort of answered the questions and put in the statements really based on those principles. So, um, is there anything anybody wants changing? Rob, Rob's got his hand up. Not, not changing, Kieran. I just want to say I think it does a good job. I think the, the other thing I pulled out was your kind of re reduction in dependency on transportation or cars um, and the sensitivity around kind of the design, I think, was another thing that I noticed when I read through it that you'd, you'd put in there as some context. Absolutely. Well, that was quite a central plank to the local plan. So adherence to the local plan is the thing I think we've got to keep that message going as loud and clear as we can. Okay. Heather, your hands up. Um, I thought it was brilliant. Thank you very much for doing it. It's a massive job. Um, I noticed that I couldn't see anything about um, restoring the balance of village property by providing inexpensive housing. And I just wondered whether you wanted to include that from the parish plan um, and perhaps merge your protection of green spaces and environment biodiversity into one when you were talking about the three priorities. Unfortunately, that is a multiple choice question. So you have to select their options. You can't uh, add your own. Can we add in anything about local or affordable housing anyway? In yeah, I mean, there, there are um, uh, bits in the form about the uh, infrastructure levy, how planning, you know, about um, uh, 
the type of houses that we want them to see a mix of uh, housing um, addressing different needs. Um, as far as uh, how this would affect Hilton specifically, um, the land would be classed as renewal land or protected land. So protected, nothing happens. Renewal, site by site, case by case example, seeing how um, uh, that might work. Um, the, in terms of affordable housing, the, there's quite a lot in this document about how you analyze how much affordable housing you need, how it gets paid for, how much of that risk is taken on by the local authority, how much by uh, the um, builders and the developers. Um, and a lot of this is, uh, is designed to make that much easier. So I think in general, you know, when I said uh, encourage more building meeting your local needs, that's what, where we've had questions on that, that as you go through the form. I've tried to make that a recurring positive thing from our side. Uh, Anne, was your hand up? Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, I, I also felt, and I appreciate the point you're making, Kieran, and as others have said, it was a lot of work and I have read through it all. So I was very happy with your responses. Uh, just one or two thought lets. Um, question 21, and I, can't, I haven't got the thing in front of me at the minute, but I wondered if question 21, there could be a comment about affordable housing or a tick in that box. Um, but, but, but the other main thing I struggled a bit with, and I may just have missed it, is the three categories of uh, land protected and so on and so on. Um, how, how, how do we, um, if you like, uh, how do you get categorized? and do we have any influence over that? Because I, I can imagine um, an occasion where our view of what the category should be may not be the same as a developer's. Okay, let me just come back to uh, your first question. Uh, question 21, when new development happens in your area, what is your priority for what comes with it? Yes. Now, one of the options was uh, more and better housing, I think, wasn't that right, Nicola? Oh, better. Um, so we could put that in instead. But um, have all the affordable housing. Yeah, and it's multiple choice, so you only get to pick one. And which are the choices? Sorry to. Um, the choices were uh, more or better infrastructure, which is the one I picked. Design of new buildings. Not mm -hmm. sure what exactly that's meaning. You know, obviously the design is important, so I guess that's what it means. Uh, more shops and or employment space, green space, uh, or don't know. So they're the options. Oh, I see. All right. Okay. That's a shame. Gone for the best infrastructure. <laughs> okay, with... thank you. I shall shut up now. Yeah. Uh, um, does someone else have a hand up? Um, hey, Ian, welcome. Just, uh, Is this your uh, first comment tonight? Oh, yes. I did. Well, sensible one. Um, we've um, got several mentions within the document about neighbourhood plans. Mm. Do we know whether they were including village design statements and parish plans in that, that phrase? Uh, they do mention neighbourhood plans and they're in support of neighbourhood plans. Yeah. And there's a question about that where we say we are also in support of neighbourhood plans but I don't remember anything to do with parish plans. No, I couldn't see anything to do with either parish plan or village design statement. And when all said and done, I got the feeling that a lot of the, the crux of this paper um, was what we'd put into the village design statement. So your neighbourhood plan becomes a formal planning document, goes through a consultation process and has to be lodged with this district. So it is a, um, a formal design plan for the neighbourhood. Uh, a village plan and a village design statement don't carry the same weight in the planning process. Yeah, I mean, we have, it's okay. as an aside, but we have, we have considered a neighbourhood plan before and sort of- yeah. That's right. A bit concerned about its length, but whether we, well, Peter, sorry. It also cost about four thousand pounds and takes That's about right. two years to get yeah. back and are only recommended for uh, settlements where a considerable amount of building is is foreseen. That's right. Let's say if you're going to have foreseen building, then 
how that's how that's built is probably more appropriate. Okay. Um, okay. So so moving on, are we generally happy with Kieran's responses or whatever? So that 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 can be absolutely a tremendous amount of work went into it. Well done. So uh, so he's uh, before he can't get out of, get out of his office. <laughs> um, can I propose then that we send it in its current form? Uh, I'll propose that. Can I second it, please? Oh, Heather was first. Okay. All in favour? Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's great. Good. And thank you for that. Excellent. Um, right. So moving swiftly on. Diddly -diddy -diddy. Right. I think we're on to LHI now, aren't we? Just don't rush me. Too many screens. That was very confusing for an old man. <laughs> right. Uh, to receive an update regarding the progress of 2021 Local Highways Improvement Fund. Uh, this is the bid for the feasibility study. Uh, into the removal of the B1040 from the Cambridgeshire County Council freight route map uh, and decide upon the next steps. Now, I think I'm going to have to get, well, you've seen um, the, the various slides that were in the PowerPoint um, presentation. Uh, I'm just wondering, Nicola, whether you want to give a summary. Is that a bit unfair? Because I haven't told you about that, but <laughs> no, it's fine. members of the public, if this is, if this is going to get broadcast, uh, it might be a, a bit of a because I mean basically we, we we get we're getting somewhere but um, there's been a bit of controversy. No, we're isn't? not. <laughs> I don't think we are. Um, just take you back to March. We had a meeting in the Methodist Church with uh, traffic officers from the County Council, uh, so highways officers, uh, along with uh, County Councillor Ian Bates, um, and they discussed how we would go about producing the feasibility study. We discussed um, all sorts of things that regarding the traffic through Hilton. Um, I then had a subsequent conversation with Jack Eagle, um, who is the, the highways officer that we are linking with directly. Um, and he told me specifically that the County Council will not be working on this feasibility study as it would be inappropriate for them to formulate the study and then uh, review it once it gets submitted to the County Council because what, what will happen is it will get submitted to the County Council, the County Council will immediately bounce it to the, the highways officers to review the data. So if they've produced the data, they can't then review it. Um, there's also work going on behind the scenes um, in the policy, uh, highways policy department where they're looking at the advisory freight route map and its relevance today, uh, obviously with uh, the rise of the SATNAV, uh, having an advisory map may not be uh, the right route for the County Council. Um, I have spoken with the uh, officer that is dealing with that and she said that that's due to go to committee in December with a view to forming a working party to, to look at the, the viability of that map. So we're not expecting a response anytime soon. In the meantime, we've had a feasibility study from um, the local projects department so this is the department that actually runs the LHI fund um, and this there's there's a slight typo in their um, statement regarding what our application was for so they've added the word and in the sentence so it becomes removal of the B1040 through Hilton and from the advisory freight route map so unfortunately the majority of this document refers to the removal of the letters and numbers B1040 from the road signs, uh, which they've quite rightly said is not a possible uh, option. And then there's uh, one paragraph on the report deferring the work to the work that the other department is doing on the AFR map um, and basically putting us on hold. So I've gone back to the, the local projects, uh, highway projects to say, here's the information I've got with the traffic officers who we were told are working with it. Um, and to try and get a response from them. And I did get a response on Friday um, to say that the money hasn't all been spent, but some of the money has been spent on this uh, report, which the, so this is the manager within the highway project that I'm now dealing with rather than the officer. Um, and she's saying that the report is relevant uh, to what they've been asked to do. So, um, I would still dispute that point. Um, yeah, yeah. But she has said that they cannot uh, authorise us to uh, appoint external consultants, which is what the traffic officer that I initially spoke with and we initially met with has advised us to do. 
So again, we're a little in limbo. Mm. I have um, got you some quotes for traffic consultants, one of whom I managed to negotiate to exactly spot on budget. Um, <laughs> but, um, unfortunately, if we decide to proceed with the report from the traffic consultant, that money is going to have to come from general reserves. It doesn't sound like we're going to be getting that money from our LHI bid. Um, the other option will be to go back to the highways projects team and ask them to do the work that the highway consultant was uh, was due to do. Okay, can I just add a point there? Um, it sounds like you've had further communication with Cambridge County Council um, and that they have spent some of the money. I mean, do you think there's any chance of more communication will get the money out of them or have they said that it's their money and they'll spend it because at one so, point we were saying that they, they'd have to know what we were spending on before they would authorize it yeah they would want control over the scope of work um so the 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 quote that where i've got that information from is that she said the total amount allocated for the feasibility study was agreed as 2200 including the pc's 10 percent contribution the sure. total amount has not yet been spent so I would take that implication to mean that some has been spent, but there is some left. Okay. So but I, mean, I don't know how much. I mean, one of the things I was going to propose or suggest that we we continued uh, conversation with Cambridge County Council. I mean, is there is there much more to be gained? Do you think? In what in the I mean, you, you presumably are telephoning them, are you? Have you spoken to them? And uh, I spoke with Jack Eagle yep, uh, over the phone. I haven't spoken with Anna over the phone. It's all been via email. But I mean, do you do you get the sense that there is further negotiation room to move well she's we asked it? for she's asked for the scope of work that i gave to the traffic consultants oh right um and whether they can then carry out that scope of work from the oh. highway projects team okay so there's a glimmer we don't know how much that is left and there's a glimmer that we can still negotiate possibly okay sorry Anne, your hands up um yes i, I think the there are so many aspects to this that are driving me completely nuts. But firstly, I think Nick did a great job in pushing back to the county council, all these various people. But if you remember, the county council sat with us in the Methodist church and effectively advised us that the uh, and because of the TRO back in 1998-2000 uh, was rejected um, because there weren't sufficient alternative routes for traffic to get round, um, then they created the advisory freight route map, which has B1040 through Hilton solidly on it, that what the council advised us to do was until we could um, get the reasons for the TRO rejection uh, to be overruled, overturned, they could do nothing to help get uh, traffic calming through the village. Um, and it was their advice that said, uh, you know, advisory freight route map, you know, in order to get to get somewhere, because that would give us the vehicle by which we could then say um, the reasons for rejection back in 1998, 2000 um, have, are no longer valid, blah, 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 blah. Now that's what they advised us to do and we're, were quite supportive, in fact, we're supportive of a lot of the data we gave them to show what some of the numbers looked like, et cetera. Um, so now that they're revising uh, or reconsidering whether an area freight route map exists kind of blows the base out of uh, the, the objective of the feasibility study. I mean, if, if they're not, if they actually aren't paying any attention to it, and neither is anybody else, then investing any kind of effort into a feasibility study to get us off that map just is a complete waste of time in my head. Um, but uh, the, the, the other piece too, and as, as Nick has intimated, we've had conversations and emails with various people um, and they're saying different things. Uh, Karen Lund, bless her, and I'm happy if she's listening, has twice now miscommunicated what we've asked for, way at the beginning and then again now. Um, and we've had a different message from her, from Sharon Piper, from Jack Eagle, and from Anna, I can't remember her surname because it's terribly long. Um, so I, I, from my point of view, confusion reigns. And whilst I would like us to keep pressing ahead to get traffic reduced in Hilton, I can't see what focus 
there is at the minute for that particular feasibility study um, because its base has been blown. So I know they'd have said, and we can certainly pursue this, that we need to go back to them and talk about what else the feasibility study could be on so that they can use the money wisely. And so for me, the only course, the only next step for that particular LHI uh, is to go and talk to them, well, what can we do given you're looking at the area freight route map anyway, and given all these other comments that have been made. Um, and as I remember right, the advisory uh, freight route map is gonna be potentially uh, released next year, early part next year. That's, that's the Do last. What do you mean by release? Well, the members are gonna make a decision later in the year. So at the next you know, at the moment, it's still being discussed. December. Yes. They December, are a formal working party at, when it's presented to the December meeting. So I don't know when the actual decision will be made. So no, it will depend no, no. on how long the working party spend on it. But we won't get to hear about it until 2021, will we? Or if they, even when, when they conclude. Um, so it's which, interesting. Which is why in the meantime, I think it'd be wiser for us to go and talk to CCC about what can uh, um, our LHR project helpfully be about and let's forget the advisory freight route map because it looks like that's what they will do. Mm. Well, I mean, that's, um, at the moment, we, we don't know how much money spare um, because if they, you know, they might choose and say, well, actually most of the money is spent and you've only got a few hundred pounds left and you can't do much with that. Um, I think really perhaps whether, whether we ever find out how much money we've got um, and then they it's a question of whether we want to move on. I mean, the other part of this item was the um, the uh, traffic consultant for a, a two and a half thousand pound bid. Whether that's going to be of any interest. I mean, does anyone sort of else want to make a comment about the situation so far? I agree with Anne. The reason we did this LHI bid was the precursor to. Um, traffic the TRO or any any other things that we wanted to do within the village to do with traffic. So if we don't need to do remove from the advisory framework, it seems pointless pursuing it. I would then push and say, well the parish council have spent two hundred pounds towards the LHI. They've given us a report that's actually not what we were hoping to get. Do we get any of that money back? Like it just seems a bit unusual that they've, just, they've given us a report that's actually incorrect and we've, we've actually paid for some of that. Okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so on, on top of there, it's 2000. We're supposed to be chipping in 200, and so far there's been no no comment from CCC that they want our 200 pounds, is there? No. Um, okay. All right, so we didn't pay that already up front. No, 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 no. It, once, once they spent it, then we would have to chip in. But say so it seems they don't seem to be sure how much they spent on it so far. <laughs> um, and so we're a bit in limbo. But say so it's a question of whether we just keep pursuing it, see how we get on, or whether we try and get a figure out of them and decide. I mean, moving that, that aside, is anybody in favour of uh, employing the consultant for, for extra traffic data? Um, I mean, that would be potentially two and a half thousand pounds straight out of our pocket. Um, so that's obviously not budgeted for. The plus side is that we would have an independent report um, and we may learn a few tricks about how the professionals do their reports. So, I mean, bearing in mind what's what we've put in for the LHI 21-22, personally, I think that would be a potential investment. Um, but I, I put that in as a as a suggestion. And I know you've got your, comment, your hand up, but everyone else has been very quiet tonight, so I don't know whether they've got any comments or whether they're just happy with how the three of us are chatting. So, um, Peter? Just to clarify one point that was made, did Cambridgeshire County Council say they would not use data collected by an external consultant? Nicola, that's probably one for you. No, that's it? not what they said. They said that they couldn't, we couldn't instruct an external consultant because they wouldn't have control over the scope of works. I mean, to, to clarify that, we could instruct him, but they wouldn't pay for it. If they're going to 
if they're going to actually pay for it. Oh, okay, so out of the LHI, £2,000, they wouldn't put money towards an external consultant unless they said, yes, yeah. you, you can do it, but based on this. Yeah, so the, okay. I mean, there is there is some communication that could be had that if if our consultant, whoever we chose, happened to uh, fall in line with what CCC wanted mm -hmm. and that there was a significant budget still left, then there would be margin for providing something. But there's a couple of ifs there. Uh, Heather, mm -hmm. Heather, far away. Um, because the advisory framework sounds as though it's going out of the window, I don't think there's any merit in pursuing that route at all. Um, I don't think there's any merit in getting consultants because actually we have got a lot of data that we can provide um, and I don't think the consultants data will be any different. I do like the idea of Nicola going back to Cambridge County Council just to say what can we do given the circumstances but um, it doesn't seem worthwhile to put any more money in at this stage to um, pursue this route of inquiry. Okay. Uh, anybody else wish to, Kieran? What's the advice from Ian Bates on this as to what we do next? Is there anything? Don't know. I have communicated with him, but I've not had a specific response. He, um, the last communication that the parish council had was when we were putting in the LHI bid, or uh, the latest one, um, and he was um, part of the requirement of the LHI bid was that he had to be informed. So we did inform him of that bid so he is aware um but he hasn't actually at the moment suggested what we should be doing as far as i'm aware and um, well just to say that ian was at the meeting with the county council people and uh some of the rest of us um wh where they actually suggested what the previous lhi bid the feasibility study about the area freight route map he was there at that time, so he he added his you know, ten pence worth uh, into that conversation. So he was very aware of what we were doing uh, and why we were doing it on on their ad advice. But I think I, I think going back to the idea of consultants, um, looking at the the various bids, a lot of what they're proposing to collect is the data that's already been collected on the back of a previous successful. LHI that um, gave us the equipment by which we could measure you know, vehicles coming and going. And also the County Council suggested to us that that idea of the strips that one of the uh, consultants um, in the proposals talks about, what they suggested was to use those for not the B1040 but the other roads uh, in, uh, in Hilton. So Gravelly Way, Gravelly Way, um, High Street, uh, etc. Um, not on the main road because we've already, in their view, got decent data gathering uh, equipment. Okay. Um, so, unless anyone's got any um, further comment, um, I'm going to propose that we ask Nicola to carry on communicating with Cambridge County Council on this bid in the hope that we can get some clarity as to where we are. Um, there seems to be a couple of loose ends that, that could potentially be tied up. Is that fair, Sandy Are you happy to? Yeah. Yeah, because you continue to try and try and come to conclusions as to where we are, uh, what monies have been spent, what monies are spare, um, and obviously we'll get to know about the advisory freight route. So that's that's my um, proposal. Can I have a second of that, please. Kieran, yeah, eventually. All in favour of that approach? Raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five. Good. We're all here. That's fine. Thank you very much. So that's the first part. And then the second part, we've had the quotes. I'm getting the feeling that we don't want to employ a consultant. We don't think it's a good good value for money at this, at this stage. Um, so my proposal there is that we do not employ um, the consultant at this stage um, and that we put the quote on hold effectively or just, just put it on the file. Um, can I have a second for that, please? That we're not going to employ. Ian, you were there. Um, Ian seconding, all in favour of not employing a consultant? All in favour? One, two, three. You know, that's good. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would just also like to thank Nicola because I believe it wasn't a pretty easy job to get those quotes. Um, <laughs> but I mean, if you can keep those um, on file because uh, who knows what we're going to need in the future. So, so that's good. Right, okay. So moving on to the next issue. Um, some of this, this is, I'm not going to read it all out because. <laughs> You've all had agendas, so you, you say you've seen it. Um, but this is from the um, 
a transport group recommendation for a petition, a letter to be sent to various people. Um, obviously, it's been superseded a little by what we've heard tonight about the, um, the, e the extraordinary traffic regulation order bid. So I think there's some clarity there that we've got. We might not have wanted it, but we've, we've got some clarity there, which may affect things. So, Anne, far away. Um, yes, uh, I, I'll confess um, that this, to quite a large extent, is born out of a high level of frustration. Um, I was going to say that. Yeah. I didn't want to be quite so rude. <laughs> Um, the Hilton Traffic Group, in looking at the ETRO, the LHI bids, plural, um, uh, and, and you know, post, post the um, lockdown, we're seeing traffic levels back to what they used to be, etc. Um, we came up with the idea of, isn't it time, two things really, one that we kind of painted what the whole picture looks like, because there's a feeling, or certainly I have it, that there's a lot of fragments of initiatives and so on, all good in their own right, but then I don't feel that the County Council or anybody else, Department of Transport, Highways England, you name it, really has a grip on the total picture uh, in, in terms of the impact on Hilton by, by the traffic. So what the traffic group um, came up with is why don't we kind of paint that picture and given we've, uh, through all the correspondence that Nick has had, for example, uh, and that we, the communication we've had with various people in the County Council, why don't we um, send a petition that illustrates uh, what is we are seeing and experiencing um, and asking them if they could work together in whatever form in order to come up with a solution that resolves the traffic situation in Hilton. Uh, it's a very long shot, but it, it, the, the point of it in a way is to, is to make clear that there are all these initiatives that have been going on for years and Hilton meantime, all the parishioners are suffering, suffering with this weight of traffic um, and uh, you know, volume of HCVs and HGVs coming through. So that's the kind of background. So what, what we've put together is um, the first page is the petition aimed at all sorts of people and they may not, this list may not be all quite the right people and I'm happy to have suggestions and we may decide ultimately not to send to every one of them. Um, but it does include the county council people uh, that we've been dealing with most recently, uh, Jeremy Smith, Jack Eagle, Karen Lund, Sharon Piper, Elsa Evans, um, I'm not sure who the ETRO contact is, and Anna, can't pronounce it, um, who's in the highways local projects team. Um, so there's a, a community of people who are trying to say, are you aware of what each other is doing that's affecting uh, Hilton? Um, then the document goes on to explain what the situation is like and how long it's been going on um, and makes reference to the combined authorities local transport plan which has all these lovely objectives about quality of life and uh, you know, clean streets air pollution low etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and uh, it references the ETRO as a current opportunity although the latest information we've had is that uh, what they didn't mean by the ETRO, that they would actually stop traffic going anywhere. Um, sorry, that's my summary. Um, so that there's a wider context and that the petitioners deserve to have the whole picture looked at. Um, I've used quotes from uh, some members of uh, Hilton in terms of their views on the traffic situation uh, in uh, Hilton, again, to paint the picture. Um, and then over a series of, of slides, the picture builds up from the initial 1998-2000 TRO being rejected um, and how that sprung, if you like, the link to the area freight route uh, map, which is what the CCC advises us to hook our um, LHI bid to. Um, but in the meantime, more roads are being built, etc. So in other words, the road network is changing. Uh, then we go on to look at um, the actions that we've been initiating in recent years, uh, and that doesn't include everything. The last three LHI bids, um, including the one that's only just gone in, 
uh, and bringing to life, if you like, the combined authorities local transport plan, which professes to be all very green and nice and terribly friendly. Um, and then we start to paint the picture of um, other initiatives that will affect us as well. So for example, um, this, the NMU cycle route, well, the ETRO is about cycle routes. The Highways England, when they built the two flyovers over the new A14, by the, well, let's not go into it, but put the cycle paths on what we might feel was the wrong side in both cases. Um, and we, we, nevertheless, we've got the NMU feasibility study. It's at least six months late and giving us a decision on whether that will proceed or, or not. We've got the St. Ives Town Council congestion on the B1096 study going on. Well, that's what feeds the uh, B1040, uh, etc. So trying to say there's a lot of things going on in this area, uh, all of which affect uh, the quality of life in Hilton. Um, then there's a list of the, the initiatives that we're currently involved with or recently involved with. Um, and you'll see on that page, page seven, there's a whole host of confusions uh, in, in play at the minute. Things are either on hold, and I have some sympathy with that because of the COVID situation, um, but all of these things are butting into each other uh, and causing, I think, confusion within the County Council, certainly within my brain, um, as to what is feasible or possible for us to aim at next. Um, then uh, we paint on page eight, uh, if you like, the whole picture and what links to what to say, um, you know, if we can see these links, uh, between the different initiatives and things in the past and things coming up in the future, then surely uh, let's not, better not to take a fragmented approach, but to look at it as a whole and say, okay, all of this is going on in and around Hilton. Uh, what would be the optimum solution uh, that helps everybody in a way, not just the Hilton people, um, but given that there's this money out there to help improve our, our the road situations, then we could use it more wisely if we actually uh, brought all these elements together. Um, and then the last page is just uh, clarifying what the request is. So looking at the objectives of all the initiatives, uh, accepting the size of the issue and how it affects people in Hilton, how strongly they feel about it. Um, and I refer to three of the objectives in the Combined Authority Local Transport Plan, uh, you know, where it claims that there will be a, a safe systems approach to all planning and transport operations, um, et cetera. Healthy streets, high quality public realm, puts people first, et cetera. Um, transport initiatives that improve air quality across the region and so on. Um, none of that is happening for or in Hilton because of the traffic levels. So um, we go on to say that you know, we, we, it's time this came to a conclusion and let's get all this picture dealt with as one uh, and that we are willing to pitch in and give a, you know, offer up the data we collect, for example, um, and uh, you know, the, the commentaries that we've had over the years from people in terms of wanting this to, to be sorted out. So that's a very quick kind of run through and hopefully you've had the chance to, to read it in more detail. It is, if you like, an act of frustration at one level, but I certainly I find it very useful to look at all these elements and, and really realize the extent to which they're all bumping into each other um, and the fragmented approach in my view, is not really going to get us very far at all. Views, please. Yeah. Um, well, just to kick things off, um, I say you, you, I, can, I can see the, the frustration that, that presented this, um, but I feel at the moment we're in quite a delicate part because obviously there's the potential that we might get something out of our first LHI, uh, and we've just put in a second LHI, so I'm I'm wary about upsetting any apple carts. Uh, that might harm our case um, and I think one of the issues that we we do need to know or have is maybe a just a chart or a, a no, an organigram of how how the system works um, and that rather than sending I mean it's a, as you say it's a a lot of pages um, and to be honest I'm I'm reading it because I'm interested in Hilton but I I can't see that many recipients would read it all the way through 
Um, so if anything went in, I think it would need to be summarised. But I think that maybe our first approach would be to, to Ian Bates to try and find out how Cambridgeshire County runs. Because as, you, as we had in the last item, we are, we are getting conflicting information. And that's, that's are. It. Yeah. Anybody else wish to say anything? Peter? Just wonder, Anne, in the middle of um, a number of the pages, there's a little red button or circle that says Hilton suffers air, noise, light, vibration, pollution. Oh, yeah. Do we have yeah. any evidence that we have air pollution? Do we have any evidence that we have light pollution, noise pollution, apart from what people say? Um, yes, back in, I can't remember when, we had, uh, I feel like, a, um, a SBS was the organisation mm. who did a, a study um, on the B1040, mm. and I've still got it somewhere, um, and it clearly indicates that that level of traffic would bring with it um, high levels of air pollution. So we don't have empirical evidence that there is air pollution, noise pollution, light pollution. Yes, or well, we do, because it's in that report. So he's taken measurements and shows that those are above acceptable levels? I believe that is the case. I'll need to go back and dig it out. But that's, okay. um, I think we would need to certainly ensure that we have got evidence that supports okay. that statement. Yeah, I mean, we have we have got our uh, our tubes, haven't we? And and um, we, we keep yep. playing those. I'm not too sure I've ever seen. That's not true. I have seen results of those, mm -hmm. but we I don't know whether we've had confirmation from CCC that they would accept those those results that they are in a form where they agree with them. So that's something. And do they show that the the readings are above acceptable levels, or do they just show readings? As far as I'm concerned, they show readings, but I, I haven't um. seen. If I can just add that that um, uh, one of the uh, Hilton Traffic Group folk uh, went into what all the current standards are for um, all these kinds of pollution, what the current standards are set at. So mm -hmm. we've got the data by which we can look at what was measured, uh, albeit two or three years ago, might have been more actually, um, and those those standards. Um, so, so we we are we can put together that picture that says we are suffering air pollution um, because and... we have some readings which show it's above yeah. these standard levels. Yeah. Okay, because that and, doesn't say in there, does it? Uh, well, <laughs> oh gosh, I thought it was long enough, but no, I'm, I'm. You're right. I'm happy to add add that kind of thing. Um, uh, what was I going to say? I think, I think, uh, um, sorry. On the on the, on the tubes. The, from memory, looking at the data, I think the EU law on NOx is 40 micrograms per metre cube. And I think we got close to it, but never actually went over it. Okay. Right. What, on the tubes? Yeah, and, and in context, 200 is really the max limit. So we're quite way off that. Okay. Well, we can check that out and just add whatever data we've got that, that uh, makes, uh, makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, sorry, Heather. Um, I think Cambridgeshire County Council were quite overwhelmed at the highways and transport meeting by the number of petitions they got from visitors, from um, villagers last month in regard to the ETRO. Um, and we're at a good place to say this is the level of feeling um, about the road. Um, yeah. I think it would be a good idea to maintain that pressure and not to let our fingers go off the pulse and not to help them to lose sight of what is a really important issue for villagers. Um, I think the document is probably too long and should be condensed yeah. to a one page <laughs> summary um, to be sent yeah. off with the option of getting a nine page document if they wish. Um, but to maintain the pressure on these people would be a good idea. Yep. Yes, I agree it's too long a document for sure. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Heather. I agree with that. Um, and again, the proposal is that we send it to all the sundry. I mean, is that how's that how's that going with with people, Peter? I just wonder whether we should let these people do their job and not pressurise them. Um, they have said that they're going to be looking at the traffic thingy in December meeting. We have got a um, a new bid for a feasibility study in for eighteen thousand um, pounds. Nicola is trying to clarify what is happening with the 2,200 pounds LHI bid. And if they spend all their time having to look at um, 
petitions and chasings and all that sort of thing is it not going to distract from getting the job done and um, yeah i mean as i think it's nice to have this, have this in the background but i'm not too sure this is the time to send it just yet um and um and the way I see this, um, and I, I totally accept it's too long a document um, as it is and, and so forth, but I don't see this just as nimbyism, here's Hilton complaining again, witter, witter, witter. I actually see it as potentially helpful to them because rather than have you know, six different initiatives or five or four or three, um, all of which ultimately are trying to uh, improve the quality of life here. If, if they could see a way by which one solution or maybe two could hit off all of this stuff, then, then surely that makes life cheaper, easier, simpler for them. So I appreciate particularly with the COVID thing, we don't want to kind of get in the way. Um, and this is, I know it probably comes over as this, but this is not meant as a smack around the ear. It's really meant as saying, look, we see this uh, floral display, you know, of multiple initiatives, um, but ultimately we're all looking to get the same thing out of it, uh, the people in, in, in Hilton. So if you understand that and look at all these uh, fragments, then maybe there is an easier way for them and for us to pull it together. I think, I think you may effectively be asked, asking CCC to rearrange their departments. Um, because there's obviously... I doubt that very much. All they have to do is talk to each other, goodness. Yeah, but then <laughs> I think they're in separate buildings, aren't they as well? So or if they do meet in buildings, I don't, I don't know. Um, the rest of you who are, who are a little bit quiet, um, do you have any feelings about the, the you know, not so the detail, but whether we send something in and or whether we just leave things as they are? Kieran? I can see, I can almost feel the frustration from our, in this document. Um, it would, I, can't, I have a lot of sympathy for it, and, I, and you never know something like this might just work. Um, I wonder whether. It, it looks like it's shot from the hip a little bit, Anne, so forgive oh, me. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of criticism, but um, I wonder if we should really put some effort into making this document really punchy um, and concise. Um, and, yeah, and, welcome and, that. And, and sort of present it well, have it in our back pocket at the moment, work on it, make it sort of a, uh, really professional, and then let some of these other things, as Peter say, play through and just see where we they, we get to. And if we really want to use it, we can then it's there ready to go. Um, mm. Sort of how I, I, I'm, I'm a, a bit uncomfortable about if, if this document gets sent now. I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, so I, I'm, I, I'm happy. I'm very happy to have um, feedback on the document and, and its content and, and so on. Um, um, my concern about putting it on the back burner it goes back to Heather's point. Now is a good time to actually, um, you could call it putting on pressure, you could call it you know, trying to get some clarity and focus into whatever action might be taken to help Hilton. So I'm, I'm not too happy about the back burner idea. I'm very happy about, about putting something crisper and crunchier and punchier uh to, together even if it means having some more detailed stuff in, in the background or as a backup sorry i didn't mean it to be put on the back burner and never to be used i mean let a couple of these other things play through first uh to peter's point um and then but, but just be ready okay uh so generally we'll talk through there um I think the proposal I'm going to suggest is that we don't use the word back burner. Um, we have this in our back pocket for, for future reference. Um, then that, that we don't send it at the moment, that we um, review at the next meeting to see how Nicola's got on with um, the current approach, see whether we, we've made any, any progress. Uh, Heather? 
Can I propose that over the next month, the documents worked on and presented back to us in four weeks time so that we can see what it is. We've got Nicola's information. We know where things have moved on to and we can then make a decision about whether to send it or not. Yeah, it's it's work for someone that may not go any further, but uh, if um, that's as... life. <laughs> Until I'm happy we, with that. Until we've got the next meeting, we won't know how we how we're progressing. We won't know. We won't have a response. We won't have a summary of where we're up to with the current LHIs. No, that's that's my thought. But we would be ready to send it if we need to prior to the December Transport and Highways meeting. Yes, well, we we will yes. have November to December to work on it. What if it? No, I'm meaning October to November, so that we can look at it in November. Yeah, but you won't know what's happening until no, and you won't know how the LHIs are doing until then. Um, but anyway, Anne, if you're happy to work in the background, um, yeah, well, you've, you've heard well, the Hilton, Hilton Traffic Group will be happy to work on it, but also happy for any of the rest of you to pitch in with um, feedback, ideas, thoughts, views. Please, please, please. I well, say so you, you've heard the comments from tonight, so if you can incorporate those. But I say um, the proposal will be that it doesn't get sent at the moment. Um, and that Nicola carries to, on to pursue what's going on with Cambridge County Council and the current yeah. LHI feasibility. That's a proposal. Can I have a seconder, please, for that? Looking around, no arms. Oh, Kieran's for his arm, actually. All in favour of that motion? Yeah, I can go with that. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Um, was, the other thing is whether we... Can I just clarify there? The motion was that the document's going to be worked on and presented to the next council meeting. Yes. Yes. I didn't actually say that. I said that we weren't going to send it. If if yeah, Anne's so to, if we've, Anne's to, we've got two proposals going on. Oh, sorry, you're Heather right. Heather made a proposal as well. Yeah. Okay. So Heather came in first. So your proposal, Heather. Sorry. Um, my proposal is that it's worked on and represented at the next council meeting for consideration in the light of any new information we have. Okay. That's the proposal from Heather. Is there a second of that one? And and seconding. Okay, all in favour of proposal number one? One, two, three, four, five, eight. Fine. Okay, all against. That's eight one. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then also part of this, are we wanting to get our county councillor involved to find out? How yeah. CCC works on transport is that a sort of general. I mean, I don't, I don't see. I think I've ever seen a uh, a chart of how transport works. Um, we don't necessarily need names, and it'd be good to know the various departments that that uh, that do work in transport. Um, we've certainly dealt with four or five people. And it'd be nice to know how each one lines up with the next. So my proposal there would be that we ask Nicola nicely to try and get some information from Ian. The, uh, the county councillor as to how the transport department is arranged. So, can I have a seconder for that one, please? Peter, a second. Yeah, all in favour of that approach as well? All in favour? Yeah. I've got something I'd like to add into that proposal. Okay. Well, when asking councillor Bates what the um, situation is, um, to ask councillor Bates who the parish council should contact regarding the promised review of traffic flows through the village um, that was going to be undertaken 12 months after the A14 was completed, which was a promise made to us at a meeting at Cambridgeshire oh, County God, Council. Yeah. I think, I think, Peter, we've asked this before and we were told that until the full road opens, is the hunting bit, that's not, they're not doing it till after then. Okay, that's fair enough, but we have got a promise that it will all be reviewed yeah. at that as part of this project that's going on. So that would also um, make me think that Cambridge County Council aren't going to be receptive to loads of stuff coming in, bombarding us when they've already made us a commitment with Highways England to review these things once the A14 um, project has been finished. Yeah, OK, well, that's a, that's a secondary thing, isn't it? I mean, let's face it, um, as long as we remember that one. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll always remember that. that. Wraps up that. OK, thank you much, then. Sorry. Um, you haven't right. got your proposal um, yet. Yep. The, the proposal then, if we're ignoring that last sentence, the proposal is that we're going to ask Ian Bates how the transport department is arranged. Is that the entire proposal? Yes. 
And who seconded? I think Peter did. Peter did, yes. And and sorry, can we just vote again, please? Okay, all in favour of that motion? Yeah, yeah, Rob? Yeah, fine, okay. Thank yeah. you. I mean, obviously the, the letter hopefully will, will be a bit longer than that. It will, good, okay. <laughs> just need to find out how, how CCC works on that issue. Thank you very much, that's good, okay. Um, now, 2181, this was uh, following on from previous item where we've, we've cancelled the fireworks, but we suggested that uh, for parishioners to dispose of garden waste would be a good service. Um, and that we were um, offering a bonfire service. Now, obviously, we need to discuss how we're going to do that. Um, and so this is a general, a general chit chat as to off suggestions. I've put it in there before that we've generally only had the site open for a Saturday, but it's a different year, different ideas. Sharon? It's worth um. just Oh, sorry. Can I just call you Sharon, first of all? I beg your pardon. Sorry, Sharon. That's right. Sorry. Um, the, the current bonfire pile is, is fairly substantial now, um, I noticed the other day. So I think that needs to be, um, you know, hopefully if we get a few dry days, I think that needs to be burnt um, well before November. Um, and then maybe we can just open... Um, the gates up actually and on what would have been bonfire night and and just have um just let parishioners know they can drop their stuff by midday and then we would set it alight during daylight so that it's not an evening bonfire so i'd be happy to you know monitor that um but i think um as in previous years we've had a a bonfire before the bonfire <laughs> and um and it's pretty big now with lots of um dry stuff on that um could be burnt okay thank you yeah yeah, yeah you may wish to comment <laughs> that, well that's right i mean to, to a large extent sharon I, I was probably going to answer some of those questions um graham and i have been trying to buy, uh, burn that bonfire since march um obviously not as uh, successfully as we would have liked and um, the way the weather looks at the moment we could end up with a reasonably dry spell which would allow us to burn it probably next um, middle of next week uh, so that's what we're thinking uh, of doing um, there are two sort of centers to it at the moment and we would uh, ignite the one that's the most recent and then move the material from the older one onto it. So that's that's the thinking there. Um, certainly, I agree with you in terms of a, a similar type of bonfire buildup that we've had in previous years. Um, if it follows the same pattern in terms of time, um, then probably Saturday the 31st and Sunday the 1st of November would be the, the time to go. I don't know okay. if others have comments. Yeah, I was just looking at my phone. It's, it's either the 1st or the 7th, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't think it'd be good on a Sunday, but it's a Saturday, isn't it? Um, or yeah. Sunday. And we, I think we discussed at the last meeting that we weren't going to say when we're going to light it. That was to Correct. coming an event and therefore drawing a crowd. Yeah. So I think all we need to decide is uh, when it's open and for how long. That's right. And then it's up to us or up to the powers that be. To us, I suppose, isn't it? Yes, to decide when we light it. Yeah. Uh, so assume that the, the current bonfire isn't there, or it's not. That's not in the equation. Um, so we just have it for, say, the morning. I mean, previously we've had nine to one, I think. But I mean, obviously Sharon and Rob, new guard, can change the times. You can you can do it differently if you like. Otherwise, it's yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would probably no. Because that's the only worry with obviously the current restrictions. You don't want lots of people turning up at the same time to deliver things. No. From memory, it, I think we can just be sensible and say to people, if there's a, we'll, we'll limit the number of people who can unload at one time. Mm. Mm. Um, I was just going to suggest maybe we go for the seventh of November because it's um, Halloween on the thirty first, and um, I just think actually, and also people kind of think of bonfire night into November, don't they? So. Um, yeah, fair point. So maybe the seventh might be a better date. I don't. I don't know. 
Yeah, no, that's nice. I'm happy with that. Um, anybody else wish to comment about? Yeah, Heather. Uh, the only problem with going for an update after bonfire night is that if there is a pile of any form whatsoever, we don't want anybody going down to light it, which they may do on the fifth. If you've done it beforehand, you're sorted. Yes. Well, I say the the hopefully the main fire's gone and the other one hasn't started. Mm. Okay, Kieran. Yeah. Um. I said I think I'm alone here, but I do really w wonder whether this is something the parish council should be doing to offer this as a service to the village. Um, there's a green bin collection, there's the tips are open, um, where green waste will be disposed of in a very much more sensible way than just burning it. Um, I just don't feel 100% comfortable. Okay, for bonfire night, when you're actually creating an event and you need the material, then that's fine. But to, as that's not gonna happen uh, this year, Seems a bit of a strange thing for us to be doing this, risking putting people together uh, as they come and deliver um, their stuff. We all know what goes on that bonfire is not always exactly what we want um, from many years of watching that happen. Uh, so I, I just think the parish council should really be doing this, but um, I realise my voice might be a lone one. Um, again, Nicholas in the hotspot today. I mean. What, the minutes of the previous meeting has that been published that we were going to have a meet i mean i know it was discussed and we all agreed you resolved that you were going to offer this service so in order to revoke that it needs to go on as a special agenda oh. item signed by five councillors yeah so it's um, so yes so um what i uh, oh sorry <laughs> sorry sharon I also think actually, you know, people, um, because we've done it for so many years, people automatically think, you know, oh, like the pollarding crew or whatever. Um, you know, I think this year they're due to pollard the trees in the um, churchyard. Um, so I think there's an awful lot of, um, you know, goodwill in the village and um, people will, you know go out of their way when we do kind of like um ivy cutting and things like that so i just think it's it's a bit of a harmless uh, you know service for us to just light a bonfire you know for to get rid of um green waste and i appreciate that the tip is open but actually you have to book an appointment it's quite um well you know i've done it a few times um, and then they might need a trailer or something to take um, their stuff to. Some people only cut their, you know, hedges down every <laughs> every year, um, and uh, and maybe rightly or wrongly rely on on being able to burn it in the um, on the bonfire. So I think it's um, you know we already can't um, entertain the village with a you know with the usual bonfire. Um, I mean, I think people will, obviously most people drive to the um, bonfire or come with a wheelbarrow. So actually we can socially distance people by, you know, bringing them in um, and we can be on the gate. So I think it would be um, quite a nice thing to do, especially as we've already advertised it. Yeah, uh, Ian? Just a reminder, um, let people know that historically there used to be two bonfires a year. There used to be one in the November time, and this was to allow, as uh, Sharon has mentioned, for uh, green matter cuttings to uh, uh, be burnt. But there also used to be one in the spring as well. So when people went out there and got their garden tidy and ready for the summer, Again, there used to be another bonfire at that time of the year, and it was done very much as a service to the village. Yeah. And it was a, a number of years ago, the, the one in the spring ceased. It certainly was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or would it be? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think I think the, sort of the primary issue here is is how we control um, the two meters distance, how we how we control. I mean, I think to to go back on what we said would be Tricky, not not impossible if there was a general feeling, um, but I think the general um, the, the problem is is how we how we distance people. Now, if we can if we can control that, if we can get enough people on the gate to make sure, and maybe 
well, I was going to say limited time, but we need to make sure that, that it is manned and therefore distance is observed. Um, and that I think we do make no mention of when the bonfire is lit. We don't want to encourage people no. to come down at a certain time. We just have to decide when to light it. Um, no. Well, Rob and I policed it last year and, and it was actually, you know, there was quite a bit of time where nobody mm. nobody pitched up. So, and there wasn't a, a mad rush or anything. It was, it was actually all quite civilised and I can't, I can't remember even getting two people come at the same time, actually, when I was on there. So, I mean, maybe Rob and I could do it together this year just to, you know, but even actually when you look at the size of the bonfire. Oh, she's oh, gone. She's gone. I think well, we, I th we've got the gist of that. Um, Heather? Um, I was just going to ask if we can record the number of villagers this year who use it, because I do think Kieran's got a point that with green bins now, we should perhaps consider in the future whether it's a service we continue to offer. We'll give, we'll, we'll give everyone who attends a, a, a leaflet as to how they should be getting rid of their green waste. But no, we won't do that. Yes, good point. Um, so, Rob, are you and, obviously Sharon's not here now, but are you and Sharon happy to lead? I mean, I don't expect you to, the two of you, man the gate yourselves, but are you happy to sort of come up yeah, with we'll a... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go away and um, put a okay. timetable together and see if other people are prepared to support uh, and go from there. Okay, and so that will be the proposal. Sorry? We'll obviously suggest the necessary PPE, et cetera, and uh, some guidelines around the current environment. Yeah, which would need to be on their notice and whatever. So, and Nicola, presumably you can stick it on websites and things, can't you, and Facebooks and things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thank you very much. So the proposal would be that we do have, what's that bonfire like? We will, we will have a bonfire collection service that's open from, put you on the spot, well, um, uh, I'll let Rob and Sharon decide what time, but it will just I, be- I'm just, I'm just um, I'm just thinking of Kieran's words actually, and just wondering, you know, I think I think if we word this in a considerate way, uh, as to say, look, this isn't necessarily a free for all. Come and dump all your rubbish rather than put it in the green bin, but just say, as in previous years, this service would have been available. We are going to do it, uh, but please only do it if necessary. Yeah. Perhaps we could put something like that in the wording, just so that it yeah. isn't a floodgate for everyone who decides to go and chop a tree down for the weekend because. They think we need the wood. Uh, make yes. a point of although we're not having a bonfire, we don't need it. If you had and relied on this service, we will carry on if necessary, sort of thing. Yeah, I think that's that's good. Yes, okay. Um, and so that's a proposal that we do carry on with the various restrictions that we've heard or various uh, caveats that we've heard, um, and that we won't light it until we. I mean, how we agree to light it, I'm not too sure, but uh, maybe. A few emails and texts can be done, including Ian, but green and whatever. So um, we'll, we'll see when it actually gets lit. Well, I suggest we don't advertise when we're going to light it and just keep it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's fine. So, uh, Nicola, is that uh, precise enough to take a vote on that? I think a bit waffly, but I mean, I think you've. Hang on, I'm scribbling. You've heard the outline. Still scribbling. It's fine. Okay, so you're going to offer a bonfire service for those parishioners that rely on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob and Sharon to organise access to the wilderness, um, but not advertising when you're going to light it. Fine. Is that satisfactory? Yeah, um, and Fine. Sharon, I'll give you some comments, Nicola, as to what to, to say, etc. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, that's proposal. Can I have a seconder, please? Oh, Ian seconding. All in favour? One, two, three, four. I mean, I presume we can. Can we count Sharon? We can't count Sharon, can we? Oh, we can't. Sharon, we're voting on it. <laughs> I'm not going to run through it all again. Oh, you're, you're muted. Okay. Um, so, uh, Nicola, are you happy to count Sharon in? Sorry, if we just read the proposal so that Sharon knows what she's voting yeah. on. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Can you? So, um, Graham's proposed that a bonfire service is provided for those parishioners who rely on this service. Uh, yourself and Rob to organise access to the wilderness, not advertising when it's going to be lit, and you're going to provide me with some information to put on the website and notice boards. That's a proposal. Uh, Ian seconded it. Um, so all those in favour of that proposal? Can we have a recount, please? Fine. OK, thank you. And Kieran, are you abstaining or against? I'll abstain. You abstain. OK, that's fine. Thank you much. That's good. So um, if Rob and... Sharon, can you just send some notes around as if you want help on the gate and stuff? That'd be great. Thank you. Um, 
Right. OK, this is uh, an item that was carried over from a previous meeting. Discuss and decide whether to install a cupboard or cupboards with shelves into the bus shelter on Potton Road, which can be used as a village library. This was from Heather probably last week, wasn't it? Or last last month. So that's that's a proposal. Obviously, lots of parishes have they normally they normally use phone boxes, but uh, we're going one one bigger and better. Um, Heather, any else you, you wish to add? Um, not really. I've got a, at least one book club in Hilton who are prepared to help to run it, to make sure that the material in it is appropriate, keep it clean and tidy. Um, it needs to be a cupboard with a door on it um, so that it's drier. Um, but having looked inside the bus shelter, it looks to me as though it does maintain its um, dryness fairly, fairly easily. OK. Um... Obviously, I don't know how controversial it's going to be with the rest of the councillors. I'm slightly concerned about the timing, um, obviously, with COVID around the, the, the area, whether we should be having a, I wouldn't say a free for all, but obviously, uh, there is potential for transferring information or uh, infection, rather, information and infection. Um, and so that would be my, my concern. But Anne? Um, so just a bit of information. Latest information I've read about COVID and surfaces is that uh, it's not as uh, easily, it's not as easy to catch it from a surface as they first thought. So unless you actually touch a surface almost immediately after an infected person has done so, um, it's probably quite safe. So um, I'm just throwing that in the pot that the whole surfaces thing uh, is less of an issue than the airborne transmission of COVID. Okay. Um, anybody else wish to throw anything in the pot? Have you all made your minds? <laughs> Sorry, Anne, yeah? Well, no, just uh, Heather made a comment, um, uh, I think, in the proposal about um, you, we don't particularly want to be buying cupboards and stuff, but if we uh, do want to go ahead with it, maybe just to ask if people have got any spare <laughs> cupboards or even drawers or something that could be used. I'd favour that. People would feel better at it uh, if they'd uh, actually created or given up the structure for it. Yeah, well, there's, cert there's certainly no proposal at the moment for any money to change hands, so that would need to be the case, certainly, yes. Heather, here. Um, yes, I'm hoping it is going to be a, somebody's got something that we can use to make a cupboard. Um, I'm feeling that we can use S137 money for it if necessary, but let's get there. Is that right, Nicola? Yeah, you haven't got a power to provide a library, um, so you'd have to use Section 137. If we wanted to. Okay. Uh, Kieran? Uh, who does the bus stop belong to? And do we need to ask permission? Parish Us. Us. It's on our uh, asset list. <laughs> We made it. <laughs> we should be proud of ourselves. <laughs> um, Laura. I like the idea in principle. Um, I'm not sure about the COVID news currently because we're not doing COVID. So I wouldn't like to say about the actual risks from it. But I do know the library bus does in October. So um, I don't know what library requirements are for COVID. People come in. Might be something worth checking so that we know what other big people are doing in the place, some restrictions. Um, yes, but I like the idea of doing it at some point or okay. we're less infected. Okay, I've got a few words there. I, I got, I like the idea, and there was a bit of a concern about COVID. So, um, I'm just going to come back to Heather there. The, the, just a clarification there that you have got volunteers or you know people who would I'm trying to think of the words who would look after the the cupboard uh, do a weekly check yes that everything's okay now. okay so does anyone else want to ask any more questions or are we happy with what we've heard Peter what's the fire risk Zin? what's the fire, fire? uh yeah well it's no it's I would think it's probably less than newspapers being left in the bus shelter are I don't know are you thinking that we should be having a, a more secure case covered? I just wonder what 
um, activities go on in the bus shelter at night. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think they propose they they um, make this a fire risk. Okay. Well, I mean, it's something that we could ask our dear clerk to uh, check with our insurers to see whether uh, a large quantity of paper would would invalidate our insurance. I mean, obviously, it's a pretty self-contained bus shelter, so the transfer of flames to something else wouldn't be a problem. But obviously, it would cost a lot to repair it. Um, mm -hmm. I just get to come, Rob. I, li I like the idea. Um, I, I do worry, kind of leading on a bit from Peter's comments, that perhaps think about what goes on in there, uh, and, and you know, leaving things in there where they just get damaged, vandalised. Right. You so. Know. And, and I, mean, I just, I just worry that we, we might do this, and they might not last long. And what the expectation beyond that? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Heather. Sorry, Graham. I've got Laura's comments. Sorry. sorry, sorry. Can I just jump in there? I've got Laura's comments as her sound isn't working very well. Oh, she, she's been typing, is she? She's typed them so that I can read them for her. Okay. So uh, her comment was that the library bus is coming back in October, and she thought uh, you could check and see what they do regarding touching books. Uh, she thinks it's a good idea for the future, even if we wait until the COVID risk is reduced. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, Heather, you're... Heather, I think you were, I shut you up, didn't I? So I've cut too far in. Are you okay, Heather? Yes, I'm, I'm just thinking about all the phone boxes that I see around Cambridgeshire with various books in, and I haven't seen any of them burnt. Doesn't mean to say it hasn't happened, but um, it does seem to be okay. It is on a fairly public road, so not hidden away, which might be a good thing. Um, it will probably take us several months to get a shelving set set up yeah. anyway. So we're probably not talking about 20, tw till 2021, but um, just as an idea in principle. Okay. Um, Sharon? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just hold it there. I'll, I'll bring Kieran in because you did. Are you, st are you still wanting to speak, Kieran? Yeah, I, I just, um, I think it's a good idea in principle. I'd like to see it happen. I do wonder whether we ought to just hang on until we get past this COVID thing though. So I'm with Laura on this. Okay. Sharon, are you back on with us? Not really. Yeah. No. Okay. I can't hear you, Sharon. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Are you sharing Laura's phone? <laughs> uh, let me just uh, the speakers are on a hundred percent um okay i'll just speak up um i think if we look at the um the nativity set that is outside the methodist church at christmas that one there is never vandalized but actually when it's been in the main church um that tends to get vandalized because it's sort of um you know off the beaten track so i think that the main road uh being so busy i i don't think it would be um you know a, a spot where the vandals would do anything actually because um i don't think that bus shelter has ever been graffitied either has it well it's got uh, i mean <laughs> it's never had some books in it before so that may be a bit of a magnet uh, and who knows i mean you know put a light in there and you could read all night something i don't yeah you know. <laughs> I mean, I think maybe I, I will ask Nicola to just check with our insurers that that, that isn't going to be a problem. But I think we've got, a, I think we've sort of talked it through and there's a general feeling that if we look at it in principle, not to do anything in a hurry, but um, subject to a bit more information, but in principle, we're in favour. That's going to be a recommendation that we do some further work um, with a view to installing a, a book shelf or book cupboard in the bus shelter. Can I have a seconder for that, please? Okay, Sharon seconding it. All in favour? You'll raise your right hand. Yeah. Um, Rob? Yeah. Okay. So, so that's just in principle. Nothing will happen until we get a bit sorted out, but in principle, we will, we will carry on with that with that motion. Good. Thank you very much. For reference, Sharon, there has actually been low-level vandalism to the one outside the Methodist Church as well, but uh, not as bad as what's happened down at the, the main church. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Well, yeah, okay, let's, we can move on with that. Thank you, Right, to uh, review and decide upon members of the Pavilion Working Group, uh, 2183. 
Um, this is, uh, you'll be aware that there's been a group chit-chatting about the pavilion working group. Um, uh, Sharon has asked to stand down from convenient for work reasons. So we're really looking for somebody else to jump in and take it over because we have got planning permission, but maybe it's time to review it. We've had a couple of uh, grants turned down. So it's probably a good time to revisit and see what, see what we can do. Um, so Sharon. Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, I think, you know, it just needs perhaps a bit more time um, and impetus to to approach local businesses like um, Mick George and um, other local, you know, um, Acre and um, Sport England. I've had two, two attempts now and they've um, re refused funding despite giving us the... Um, the initial feeling that we were going to get funding um, and um, I just think you know we're on a bit of a I'm aware we're on a, a, a sort of time restraint now because um, of the planning permission and I just feel like Sarah Partridge was um, on the committee sub, on the uh, subgroup so um, and she's now left so I just think perhaps we need to um, regroup and if if somebody was interested in convening the group, then I'd be still happy to help, but I just, due to work, I just don't have the time um, to put into it at the moment. No, um, and I might just add that um, Graham Gribbin, who has got a lot of experience with finance and um, from Feast Week, and mm -hmm. of course he worked for the bank. Um, I know he's not on the parish council, but um, I've spoken to him. He's very keen to get, um, involved or, or offer support but um, he knows of several funding streams through banks like Lloyd's and um, who are looking for projects to um, invest in um, similar to this so I think there you know there's probably lots of funding options it's just that I haven't got time to investigate those at the moment. No that's fine that's cool. thank you. Uh, you were very, uh, you did quite, quite a few forms of all, didn't you? And, uh, <laughs> got round quite a few cups of coffee in your, in your, in your, in your uh, conservatory. So thank you. Thank yeah. You for your yeah. Um, so just run through, you've got, uh, you've got uh, Peter, Kieran, myself, um, and Sharon, and Alan Salem, of course, as a, a, the main uh, stalwart of the cricket club. So there's a suggestion there that we could uh, include uh, a named member of the public, a prisoner. Does any of the... Uh, aforementioned parishioners who are on the group wish to take it on. That's, I'm obviously looking at Peter or Kieran. Oh, I don't think I still hear it. So it's, are either of you two keen to convene? Mm. Kieran, are you, are you wanting to nominate Peter? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, right, I'm, uh, uh, I'm happy to take it on. Yeah, I'm happy to take it on. Yeah, Okay. Um, and as, it, as it's a working group, uh, just to let the, the rest of parish know that parish council know that anything that we come up with decide, we will report back to the council. Um, so I think it's probably best if we just leave it like that. Uh, and perhaps if you could have, sort of arrange a Zoom meeting with us at some point, Kieran, yeah. and then we could sort of uh, give it a fresh start and see where we're at. That yeah. might be good, a good starting point. Um, okay. Sharon? I just wondered whether we needed some more members on the subgroup because there is quite a lot. Sorry, uh, there is, you know, there's quite a lot, um, uh, you know, to sort of um, do research on, and and uh, and I, I know Kieran's worked really hard on doing the plans and and got the, you know was successful in the planning permission. So. Um, I just think actually sometimes you know um, having a having more people on the subgroup we can um, see the project through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking as a starting point, if the if the five of us at least rather than sort of inviting someone without because obviously we are missing a parishioner here. I'm not saying that just the five of us, but I just think of oh, just five, isn't it? Um, we had six before, so I mean I think if the five of us can get together and decide how we're going to do it. I don't think the rest of the council will mind as to who we invite, um, but I do take on board that an extra pressure on two could be useful. Okay, um, so I would need to vote on that, wouldn't I? I presume, Nicola. 
Yes, please. So the proposal is that Kieran takes over as the convener of that working group. Can I have a, sec can I have a seconder, please, for that? Oh, Peter seconding it. All in favour? <coughs> Brilliant. It'd be a bit awkward if not, wouldn't it? <laughs> Fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Graham. Yeah. Um, can we put something out somehow, which means that we can apply for grants in a swifter manner? Because uh, I know. No, because the one you sent me today. It was a ten thousand pound grant. The existing village village pavilion. Sorry, this is not on the agenda. Exactly. I just kept giving a, a whatever. It's not on the agenda. Leave it to the working group. The agenda. The quote that you. The information you sent me today was for a ten thousand pound quote. If grant that had to be finished within a year, it's totally inappropriate for what we do. We have to sort the project out, find the money, not not get the money, and then do a project to suit them for the amount of money. So no. It's just that the planning commission expires in a year. Yeah, the working group's aware of that. Thank you. Okay, next item. Christmas lights. Okay, just Christmas lights. Um, now this was a, a quotation again. Um, um, again, no, we had the quotation for Christmas lights. Does anyone wish to lead on this one? Heather, do you want to lead on that one? Anybody else? Um, I think the document says everything, doesn't it? Do you yeah, want me to okay. say more? Fair enough. Um, yeah, so you've got various prices, various whatevers, um, but I'll start it off by saying it's not in the budget. <laughs> not sorry, it's not in this year's budget. And I would also repeat that the the um, the finance committee is meeting in a week's time, so we obviously could find money for this year's fire uh, fire lights if we need to. Um, but you know, discuss. <laughs> and okay, let me let me say something then because I did write a paper. Just put hand up. Yeah, and sorry, Karen. Sorry, me, me? Yeah. Sorry, did you want me to speak? Yes, please, yes. Oh sorry, beg your pardon. Um uh yeah, my only thought was um you know if the village hall are doing a Christmas tree with lights, mm -hmm. um most a, a lot of households will have lights of some sort that might go outside. I'm kind of of the view that it would be more participative and community-like, you know, as people were doing when they were applauding the NHS, is to ask um, families in, in the village to dangle out a few Christmas lights for the period, um, rather than the parish council doing what can only be a, a, a minimal effort because of the money and all the rest of it. I just feel that we should be inviting the community to create a Christmas light display. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, sure. Here, is that a, just a mumble, or you? There's agreement. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Oh, sorry. What was your, your hand up, or are you scratching your head again? Uh, I actually agree as well. With Anne? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, anybody else in, in favour? I mean, I, I, it's interesting about the village hall. We can obviously support that. I mean, we've got yeah. a few young members that maybe maybe want to assist with putting a tree up outside. I don't, to be honest, I don't know what the plans are for the village hall. Um, but I think, you know, we can obviously offer our support in whatever way we can. So, yeah, yeah. Heather? Yes, sorry, I should have taken the opportunity to just say something. Um, I was thinking that in the light of the fact that we aren't having fireworks, there would be a nice thing to demonstrate from the parish council that um, the Christmas lights would be something that everybody could see because the village green, apart from the big houses on the green that do make a really nice effort, actually by the time you get to the village hall area, the maze area, um, the pavilion area, there isn't a lot going on there. Um, there are a lot of people who walk and enjoy that area and it'd be nice to have something central there. Um, I take your point, it's not in the budget, um, I think we could find £200 if necessary to do something on the pavilion. Um, and to have a focus there would be really nice. The um, idea of having things around the village, I think people do that already. I think lots of people put lights outside their house. I don't think there's anything new there. Um, but just to do something from the parish council to the village would be a really nice token at this stage when everyone's had such a horrible year. Okay. Yeah, uh, good point. Anybody wish to add anything at all? I mean, I, I think the, the anti of that is that I don't know how many, what sort of footfall we get around the green, 
I was wondering whether that you know a, a Christmas tree on the on the village garden would see more would see more people. Um, but that, I think that's that's the the issue that we discussed about where where you know, if we did have lights, where they would go. Um, but I'm yeah, sorry. I'm um, just uh, just to kind of build on Heather's uh, point because I, I think the point you make there is very uh, a very good one about the parish council doing something for the community. I'm inclined to then say, can we do and and? So in other words, if we got something modest um, for the pavilion, particularly as we're trying to get it done up and more uh, functional for the village, we could draw attention to that by putting some kind of lights around it. Um, although again, you might find people could volunteer you some lights um, and at the same time ask the village to, to uh, I, I, I appreciate some do hang out lights, but many don't. So um, uh, we could do and and, it seems to me. Okay. Um, anybody who hasn't spoken or has spoken wishes to change their mind or say something extra? Peter? <coughs> I think Anne's idea of asking villagers around, uh, parishioners around the village to hang the lights out would be a great idea. Okay. Um, Laura, are you able to type something to us? Or? <laughs> I'll try again speaking. Well, Can bad. you hear me? No, um, yeah, I, I agree with, I think, at, although lots of people hang lights now, I think specifically going out and asking people to do it might mean people that don't always do it will hang some lights or people that do would make more of an effort to do it. So I think that's a good idea. Um, I also think the 200 pounds just to do the lights around the pavilion is not a huge amount of money. It's not like the two, two and a half thousand pounds for lighting up the tree, for example. But I don't know quite how, what the village hall is doing will combine. So if there's already a tree going up with lights under the village hall, then I think there's no need to do both. Mm. Well, we, um, well, yes. Yeah, I mean, we, we would certainly need to communicate with the village hall. And, uh, yeah. And, think we can offer our support as well in whatever way you know within reason um okie doke so we're having we've got two proposals really one is to have i mean i think the general feeling is if we do have parish council sponsored lights they would be on the pavilion from what i'm getting yeah. uh, subject to them not competing with the village hall so that would be option one and option two would be that we ask the parishioners well, just need me they needn't be exclusive uh, option two would be that we ask parishioners to make a special effort with lights this year. I think that's what we, we won't actually have a theme. We'll just say make a special effort to um, um, symbolise the end of a bad year or whatever we're going to do. Because I think, I think when we've done like the village things before, like with the scarecrows um, for VE Day and the big scarecrow walk was really successful yeah. um, instead of the VE Day celebration. So, you know, we, it, it is disappointing for families and children that Halloween potentially people can't go out and bonfire nights cancelled so it, it, it is a nice thing to consider doing something where people could walk around and look at the lights and as a yeah. a bit of an event for families. Okay so um, the proposal for the first one is that we um, send a note route or via our, our website that we ask villagers or parishioners to make a special effort this year for Christmas with extra lights on their houses. Um, can I have a seconder for that one, please? Yeah. Anybody seconding that? Oh, Anne seconding that. All in favor of that option? Raise your hands. Okay, that's, is that everybody? Ace, okay, fine. Now, the next one, I'm going to get someone else to propose because I'll be voting in that, yeah. Um, uh, Heather, your proposal would be? To put some Christmas lights on the pavilion. Okay. Can anyone second that one, please? And seconding that one. All in favour of that option? One, two, three, four. Okay. Anyone uh, abs oh, against? Being myself. Okay. Two abstentions. And sorry, two against. Sorry, and abstentions. So presumably, fine. Okay. Are you happy with that? So that that motion's carried. That we are. I'm right there, Nicola, aren't I? Yep. Yeah, it's carried that you're going to spend two five, 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 two, three. That we will be putting some lights on there. Now we should presumably be setting a budget, shouldn't we? Of up to two hundred pounds. Was it not two hundred pounds? I thought we. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. what you were voting for. It was two. I've written down two hundred pounds for lights on the pavilion. Okay. Well, yeah. I think I think the proposal was for lights on the pavilion, but two hundred pounds is if that's included in it, that's fine. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. That's good. Could uh, I just say, Graham, if that was the proposal. 
to spend up to 200 pounds on lights and pavilion, I would have supported it. But the proposal was to put lights on the pavilion. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't hear 200 pounds either. So let's, no. let's go. So <laughs> what a meeting. <laughs> we'll, st we'll start off. So the, the first vote I think we're okay with, we're going to ask parishioners to make a special effort with their Christmas lights this year. Mm -hmm. The second proposal from Heather was that we are going to put lights on the pavilion up to 200 pounds in for the parish council. Is that right? So I think my proposal was to put lights on the pavilion and then if we agreed that to then agree a budget. But I can put it in one if you want. I think now and now you know who's in the vote, I think you can put you can put it all in as one. Okay. Yes, quite. <laughs> so the proposal okay. is that, yeah. So the proposal okay, so, is, sorry, Heather, what's your proposal? My proposal is to put lights on the pavilion. Full stop. That's the proposal. Okay. Which was we've had the vote before, so we'll, we'll just say yeah, we'll second it, please. Seconding it. Oh, Sharon seconding this time. Okay, so Sharon seconding it. All in favour of that proposal? Uh, four. Okay, against. Two. Okay, and abstentions. The three of you. Okay, so that's that. And then you want to add another. And then the second proposal is having agreed that to spend two hundred pounds to put lights on the pavilion. Now, Nicola. Yes. Presumably, that's a free vote for everybody to vote about the money. Yes. It's not just the ones who voted in favour of it. No, you all vote on a resolution. Okay. They so are separate agenda items, so I think that's why the proposal has been split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, fine. But I'm saying, I'm checking that we weren't sort of, you know, the proposal. So the proposal is that the, the, the budget for the pavilion nights is £200. Can I have a second for that, please? Second it. Yeah, Laura seconding. All in favour? One, two, three, four. Okay, against. Two, abstentions. Abstentions, three, so it's the same vote, brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. It's really good. Um, right, okay. So presumably at some point, we'll need to have some further discussions about how we're gonna do it. What would it be done? Or are you? Well, Somebody came to the village and was, we have had an indication from somebody that putting lights on the pavilion would cost £200. Okay, so we're going to do it all as a subject. We, okay, and we'll check that with... We need to we'll need, need to get three quotes. Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, if, if, if we've, we've now got a budget, we, weren't, we didn't agree on a particular contractor, quota. Yeah. So the budget is £200, so we can then decide whether we do it ourselves, with some, buy some new lights, or whether we get other contracts to do it for us. Is that correct? Yeah, we need to get, say, qu three quotes to make yeah. financial legs. Fine, okay, well, that's can fine. I, can I yeah. clarify? I, I thought the quotes were more expensive than that to fit. I thought it was that they were supplying them, but it is the proposal that you get a contractor to, you'll not get a lot for 200 pound if they come and fit anything. Is the proposal that you buy some lights and someone puts them up, or is it that we pay an external body to put them up? No one's well, going to come out well, 200 pound. I mean, that label cover their cost getting there. Yeah. Well, I say that's you know, we have to do the best we can with 200 pounds. Um, and I think there are various options that we can do to to match to maximise that budget. Peter, um, I take it these would be powered from the pavilion. Yes. yes. And do we not? Are we not due to have had or get a sec, uh, up to date status on the electrics in the pavilion to be able to support? At things like external lights because a few years ago we uh, three four years ago we had to get a um an inspection of the electrical supply into the pavilion which was approved on the basis that there was some work that would need to be done in the long term but wasn't done because of the whole renovation of the pavilion yes. so will that make those lights safe or unsafe we will need to look into that worst case they're going to be battery operated ones or something but we will look into that i mean i know i know who did that inspection i'd be surprised if it was a, a part inspection that only lasted for five years i'm, I'm hoping it's still about for 10 years but I, yes it, it wasn't fully up to date but it was adequate point. Mm. Sharon? um just a thought you know i wonder whether we could actually just go and um ask nicola to buy you know lights of up to 200 pounds and then 
maybe several of us are who would be happy to um, put them up. It's not, you know, surely a step ladder and, a, <laughs> and some hooks and things is it's not beyond us really is it no, it, it comes down to peter's point that if electrics on the pavilion aren't safe but i think that's that's the that's the quote for for next meeting oh sorry that's that's the decision for next meeting as to whether we have an outside contractor or or how we do it ourselves but i'm sure we can get some quotes where we can we can make a decision and the quotes do include buying our own lights um so yeah one 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 to be reviewed for yeah. next week okay thank you Right, um, okay, this is um, 2185 to discuss and decide upon the replacement street lantern PC4 corner of Westbrook and New England, cost 240. Now you've had the comments from our electrical contractor that this light is irreparable. Um, and there's, well, who knows which other ones are coming up. So uh, it's a cost of 240 pounds to, to mend the light on Westbrook. Now, as far as I'm aware, we had no comment from interested parishioners who live in that area. No, only the parishioner that reported it as uh, not functioning originally. Okay. Um, I mean, there really is a little choice, as far as I'm aware, that's been offered to us by our contractor. That's just the, re the, the recommendation from our chosen contractor is that it's a, a £240 new lantern uh, with a photoelectric cell. Um, and I think it's worth bearing in mind that we have 20 odd street lights. Am I right? 23. Sorry? 23. 23. So there could be <laughs> something to consider for our finances in future. But yes, so that's uh, 240 pounds. So if anyone's not, if you're all happy with that, I'll, I'll, Peter? What colour is the new light going to be? I've asked the question, I haven't had a response. Okay. Rob? Going on to your point, we've got all our street lights. Do we know why this one's irreparable? Question A. And question B, is there any parts of this they can salvage to repair others that may go in the future so we don't end up just chucking away and then next week needing a component we've just thrown away? Good point. I suspect knowing companies, they might want us to keep the lantern in terms of the space. But I mean, is, that's a consideration, isn't it? That we, we ask to keep the lantern. Or at least any bits they think would be of use. Yes. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good point. That's the sort of thing I do at home, certainly. <laughs> right. Okay. So the recommendation proposal is that we do uh, agree to two hundred forty pounds for a, a street light, um, and that we ask for any spare parts to be um, given given back to us, and one of us will store it in our garages. Uh, that's the proposal. Can I have a seconder, please, for that? Anyone in favour of that? Nobody? Oh, Rob is in sec seconding that. All in favour of that course of action? New street light? Okay, and Rob, you happy? Yeah, you second it, yeah, fine. Okay, so that's that's good. So if you could action that, please, Nick, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, right. Rightio. Uh, now, moving on. To, uh, right, at the parish plan, to review the action points from the parish plan with the aim to set up a working group to the working group to do the work and present back to the council for decision and action. Now you were in the supporting documents, you had the latest update, which was done, I believe, by Rob, Anne, and Ian, which was in judging by date, it was 2017. Um, yeah. yeah. And I said the plan was in 2005. We reviewed it in 2011. We've done it in 17. So strictly speaking, or strictly speaking, previously we've looked at it every six years. Um, so it's a question of whether we want to review it, whether it needs to be reviewed, or whether we put it on the back burner for another few months or year or so. Question. Well, I I don't quite I'm sure I understand why you would leave action items open for six years. So what? What sort of actions are we talking about here? Well, the parish plan is in is in the is in the background. Uh, we get on with parish work, um, and lots of those parish actions are are things that are mentioned in in the parish plan. So this isn't this isn't like a a, a parish council to do list. It's it's uh, it's a it's a plan that the that parishioners um, it, it was come up. It was invented. Uh, what's the word? 
help me out here. The right. survey was taken place in 2005, and this is the actions that resulted from it. And was there any, if it was 2005, so 15 years ago, is there anything in the plan that suggests what time scale the plan covers? It just seems really weird to me that you would do a plan in 2005 and still have actions that even if you reviewed it in 2011 and said, well, this is no longer appropriate, let's close that action. Mm -hmm. It seems weird to have them ongoing that we're not discussing at council meetings as what we're doing about them. Yeah, I mean, well, have you seen yeah. the plan in the supporting docs? Mm, yeah. Because, because sometimes I think things change. So, that, you know, it wasn't appropriate then, but then it becomes appropriate, then it doesn't, you know, things, things move around. Um, and I think, I think one the, sorry, one of the ongoing actions is to uh, try and um, uh, constrain traffic going through the village. So, you know, that's an ongoing action. Mm. Yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a live document that we that review to see how we're getting on and see whether we've, we've missed anything. Heather? So I was director of the parish plan when I first became a councillor and I was quite intrigued by it because it says things like, number one, give young people a voice or number 25, improve sports and leisure in the village. And I don't think those things have changed since 2005. So I'd be really keen to look at those particular yeah. ones and to work out how we can do something more because we've lost a generation already. Um, so I don't really want to park it um, and just lose sight of those. But I don't know if there's any others that other people feel strongly about. I just think some of the ones that are ongoing, I think if something's been set up to address it, so we've got things that are ongoing like maintain the green, I don't think it necessarily needs to be an ongoing action because the, the action resolution is that we have a working group and whatever that was set up to do that. So I would say that those actions are potentially closed. You know, that's resolved. Like that's that was a plan and something's been an action has been taken in order to address that. But I agree there's some actions on here when I look at them, I haven't since I've been on the council seen anything actively being done to address those. So might be worth looking at. Okay. But you still keep the same line on. You still you still keep those actions as having been done rather than delete the whole line. Yeah, no, you don't delete them. You put the, the action as resolved or closed or... But I mean, some, some things are ongoing, because for instance, you, you mentioned the green. <laughs> every, every whatever Ian's out there looking at the trees. I mean, he's, you know, um, whether you can say that the plan is, is, a, is an action complete or whether it's an ongoing plan, I don't know. But Anne, your, your hand was up. Um, I think Heather is making a very good point there. Yeah, is that there's you know the working group, three members already. We can invite others into it if they want to join it. Um, why don't we just have a look at it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And see because it would stimulate agenda items for the parish council potentially, um, and bring things back that maybe should be getting a bit more attention than they've had for blah blah, blah years. Okay. Anybody else wish to comment on, on that? I mean, um, so are the three of you uh, are willing to stand as the working, at least the initial working group? Still? Well, or do you I am. Oh, well, let's, well, let's, let's start at the start beginning. Are we, are we happy to, to form a working group and look at, revisit this, the parish plan, where previously it's, it's been longer than, you know, we're, it's only three years since it was last looked at. But if if the will of the council is that we do form a working group to review it again then then that, that's fine so that's that's the proposal that's on the table is this to review the actions like the plan doesn't get reviewed again and rewritten i'm not quite sure no, no, I understand. No, this this is the 30 point this is the, the summary you've got the summary is yeah yes, that's, that's to look at those actions uh, or you know desires from the village and see you know just to see what can be updated or what or what else would need to be done that's that's the recommend. That's what the working group would recommend back to council. Or well, they can produce whatever they want, really. But they're, they are reviewing that that uh, summary sheet. So that would be the proposal. Um, can I have a seconder for that, please? And seconding it. All those in favour? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How come have we, have we missed somebody? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Sorry, that's eight. Is it eight? You said eight. Sorry, I missed Sharon on the bottom. Okay. 
Okay, and against is is yours truly, and no no abstentions. Okay, so then um, do we need to ask who's on the working group? I suppose we will, Nicola. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So, any uh, of the parish council members who would want to be on the working group? Uh, Anne, Ian, yeah. Heather, yeah, and Laura. You uh, no, just yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yeah, I, I don't mind. I'm a bit busy currently, but I can. I don't mind being involved. Okay. I just don't want to commit too much. Okay, so it's a, a nominal five of you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's Anne, Rob, Ian, Laura, and Heather. Mm -hmm. um, if you five can sort of chat at some point and decide who's going to sort of lead it, um, and then come back with your with your thoughts at, at some later meeting, is that okay? Yep. Yep. Okay, thank you very much, that's good. Uh, right. This is the Joint Litter Picking Network, organized by St. Ives Eco Action Group. Um, again, you've seen this in supporting documents. Uh, this is a, a team of, as I understand it, a team of volunteers that are, are based in various villages, but we would, we would the, the, the volunteers would all pitch up at a particular village, do that village and then go somewhere else. So um, it would rely on parishioners to volunteer, but there is, as of the latest email we had, is that there's 150 pounds suggested cost, buying cost that uh, the parish council would need to quote, pay for good quality litter pickers, the litter picking devices. Um, now, I don't quite know, I suppose we would be deciding whether we take it any further by advertising it on our website um, and we would there's not a, there's nothing in there about the money the money came through in a separate email so I don't think we can vote on the money because it's not on the agenda but I think it's a question of whether we take it any further um, and request volunteers to um, contact Eco Action Direct or do we have to Nicola I'm looking at you again do we have to take responsibility for it because the, the, you the, have all the information that I have. Yes, I would read the that council. the parish council is joining this network. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, the thing is, have a chat about it. I mean, do we think it's worth continuing with? I mean, um, Kieran, you your hands up there. Yeah, we did a very successful tidy up, um, didn't we, for the Queen's birthday? I think it was, or, yep. Yep. and that was a good thing to do. So we're perfectly capable of organising our own. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good thing to do. Um, we got a good volunteer turnout. We, we organised some refuge sacks and all that. So uh, if it's certainly if there's money involved, I mean, we'd be better off doing it ourselves, I think. Yeah, that's... Uh, Sharon? Um, Fen Stanton do... Oh, can you hear me? Um, yeah. Fen Stanton do something similar. I think it's advertised in Spectrum. I think twice a year they do... You know pond clearance and litter picking and i agree with kieran i think you know we've got enough um vol volunteers in the village who would happily go and litter pick and i know um feast week have those litter picker things um because after every feast week we go around litter picking so i mean i wonder whether we could actually borrow feast week's litter picker thing you know the stick things um or just supply you know, uh, gloves and um, bags, and um, and and advertise it on on the uh, website and in Spectrum as maybe you know a couple of times a year. Yeah, well, I mean, just to just to sort of update you there. It, normally, if you give enough notice to HTC, you can get a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. Supplied. So it's it's quite a quite a good system, um, and we would have done a, a litter picking, but for. The, the pandemic so um it's something that we are aware of um so it's a question really whether we want to join uh, I, th I think you're kind of making something a bit bit more complex than perhaps we need so i mean yeah as well is that we would look at our own situation and um litter pick as and as and when um so Sorry, and also, can I just say, as as uh, dog walkers in the village, you know, we often pick up litter as uh, well. I do as we're walking the dogs, you know, in a a black sack. And um, so, you know, I know there is a bit of litter, but I, I don't think we have a litter problem as such in the village. When I 
you know, walk around the green and things. So I don't know what other people think. Yeah. It's a lot on the roads on the way out or in. Yeah. Yes, I think I think if you if you organised a, a big pit, you could probably find mm -hmm. some stuff, but it would it would be further out, certainly. It'd be further afield. Um, but I think the point of this system is that you're kind of sharing resources that people from St. Ives would come to visit our visit village and we would go to St. Ives and Ramsey and whatever to do theirs. But I kind of feel that um, it's best done. It's it's more environmentally sound to do it within your own area. But, uh, so my Especially with COVID. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that was the reason why we didn't do the, the previous one. It's certainly on the on the radar when, when things are safer. Yeah. Um, so my proposal is that we don't um, we don't join the eco action group for litter picking. Can I have a seconder for that, please? Kieran seconding it. All in favour that we don't take it further? All in favour? Brilliant. OK, so that's nine. Thank you very much. OK, that's good. Right. Uh, payments received. Um, again, RFO is having quite a busy night tonight. This is you, you alluded to, didn't you? Yes, it was in the financial uh, account. So, just the the second half of the precept as expected. Fine. Okay. Uh, and then followed after that, you've got all the payments that are due for or due to be paid. Um, anybody got any problems or wants clarification on the the, the items there? Is, is it twelve payments to, that are due? Yeah. And again, this this comes on to the comment that. Uh, Nicola mentioned earlier that we do pay for the village hall on an annual basis, and here we are in uh, October, and we're paying for um, last year's um, village hall rent. Anything that I noticed there? Okay. Oh, Karen? Um, could I just ask about the village hall payment? So, for for the for this year, from March the second, uh, whatever it goes, it goes up to March twenty. Um, because we haven't used it since the lockdown from the 23rd of March. Um, I take it we, we won't be met, charged for that? No. No, okay. Thank it's you. A, it's a contract booking, but unfortunately the uh, <laughs> um, it's not been opened, so that's uh, it is, we, we haven't uh, <laughs> been charged. Okay, this, thank this you. Last year's. Okay. So can I have a, a seconder? Oh, I propose that we pay those accounts. Can I have a, a seconder, please? I think Heather's first set. So Heather's seconding it. All in favour that we pay those, authorise them. Sharon, are you happy to pay more? I'm sorry. Yeah. That's right. That's fine. Good. Okay. Thank you much. Right. Moving on. Uh, what's the last one? Oh, council items. I'll go around on my screen, sort of right to left. Kieran? No. Nope. No. Myself? Nope. Peter? Uh, just one comment. In Spectrum this month, there was a letter from one of our parishioners commenting on dog fouling and I wondered if we could as we have in the past put a note up on the website and in Spectrum reminding people to um, take their dog shit home with them really I guess. Language Peter. Uh, well we can't good. do that because it, we would need to have an, have an approval of that and um, Nicola can't put things on the website unless we approved it so you have to bring it up in the next meeting. Okay. <laughs> but but maybe this this gets publicised and therefore they will uh, they'll hear this. Yeah. Heather. No. Okay. Anne. No, thank you. No. Okay. Rob. No. Ian. Not for me, thank you. No. Laura. No thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Sharon. Uh yes, just one thing. A prisoner has fed back to me that um about the the mowing in the churchyard and the the grass is sort of unevenly mown in in various areas and also um the grass around the uh, benches on the green and i just wondered whether um i i know we've brought it up before but um whether john carter could be doing a bit more strimming around um you know the gravestones and around the um park benches on the green um, because I think, uh, you know, <clears throat> whilst he was off sick and, and being paid, I believe he was going to sort of make up some hours for all of that. So I don't, I mean, I, I don't know how, ma how many hours he spends, but I think, um, you know, as we're coming into winter, it'd be nice if, if all the um, 
er those areas were strimmed so you know the grass then won't grow up um over the winter well, obviously we can't discuss it but i'm sure i'm sure ian has heard everything you said <laughs> <laughs> okay that's great um thank you very much uh and we'll see you in november uh, but just a reminder say so that the, the finance committee is meeting next week or this week so if you've got any comments that money wise um just get them into nicola brilliant Okay, thanks so much. See you soon. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.